and we are live hello everyone this is finally the workshop for Châtaigne in English I'm happy to do it now um, as usual it's not a lot prepared actually a bit better than the previous ones but I hope you will follow uh, again, uh, follow along uh, it might be a bit long because I want uh, this video to be also the kind of the reference uh, tutorial uh, in chapters uh, for uh, for some time and also because uh, today has been the day uh, uh, is the day of uh, the version 1.7.0 um, so it's a full new cycle that I've been working on for some time with uh, a lot of help from a lot of friends um, that I will thank a lot later um, you can uh, I, I will wait a tiny bit for uh, some late people to come uh, don't hesitate also to obviously uh, leave when you feel like it because uh, some things might get uh, if you are just a, a beginner some things might get a bit tricky in the end but if you want to say obviously you're welcome um, maybe in the chat you can already um, Tell me a bit what you're doing if I don't know you already or you have not been presented uh, and even if you have actually so because I, I, I want also this video to be a bit more interactive don't hesitate to ask questions whenever you want if you have problems hearing sound hearing uh, viewing the video or something that you didn't understand or went over too quick uh, you can just tell me and I will be glad to to change my course or to repeat or uh, to put uh, more precisions um, so yeah yeah don't hesitate to, to tell me what what you what you do uh, what you feel like doing with Chatagne or what you do in uh, in your professional or personal life uh, related to technology obviously uh, and I will be happy to, to put more um, to, to change a bit the course of this workshop uh, so it gets interested also a bit more for you okay number is rising um, just before starting um, I will before going to the software I will this time uh, take some time to present a bit why I did it and what's my what was my mindset when I started uh, creating this project and why do I think it's interesting to use it um, okay, I think we can start now. And okay, a shy audience, or I'm not seeing uh, anything in the chat. It's okay. Well, uh, I will just check that it works. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, thank you for this. Uh, thank you for <laughs> making the chat live. Uh, okay. And I want this to. Does not. Yeah. Great. So, why Chatagne? Why Chatagne? Uh, first, I come from uh, the artist and technology uh, fields. And I'm, my main line of work is to bring technology and to create a technologic system for, um, for shows, for artists, for different uh, type of shows. But one constant is that I'm not often touring and when uh, I, I often um, found myself uh, in a bit of struggle when creating new tools and uh, needing, um, needing the, art, the artists uh, or the technicians I worked uh, with to, to take over those tools and to be able to either continue creating or even just touring, just using them. So a lot, a lot, of, a lot of time it meant creating the tools and then uh, taking uh, a bit more time just to, just to create the interface for them to be able to use because they want code, they don't want a complex interface. So, so it's, it was either badly done or, uh, or, um, or taking on creation time. And uh, so, so I wanted something that I can easily use and that I can build over because I'm, I was finding myself uh, over and over doing the same thing, the same interface, but still taking time and trying new different ways 
but uh, in the end uh, losing a lot of time and a lot of uh, creation time so so for me yeah this is a, when you have one week of residency or two weeks uh, you want to be able to use those two weeks kind of freely having already do, uh, working tools and at the same time uh, when you leave that people can uh, use them uh, or even as an artist that you can just create without uh, always needing somebody who who is super uh, skilled in um, in technology um what did i write good that i wrote some stuff mm. hello jamie hey bamondine Sha Emilia, Nine Nebulo and John Glissimo. Thank you, Manuel, for being here. Um, also, a lot of uh, a lot of pro programs that I use or that the uh, that I used to use or that, that the companies I work for use uh, were not necessarily cross-platform. And it's a struggle when I'm using Windows, but uh, a lot of companies are using Mac. Sometimes you want a Linux somewhere uh, or even Raspberry Pi and uh, just because of some software not being able to transpose to another platform, you need to recreate some stuff or you, you, you can't use one software uh, because you can't work at home with another computer or a lot of reasons. So, so for me, it's really important when I'm doing my softwares that they are cross platforms that you can create without this uh, in mind. So you are free to create and you are free to exchange, uh, change the computer or just even create with two people with not the same system. Uh, I mean, we are in 2020 and I'm, I would be happy that it would be more, uh, if it would be more um, common. Um, and avoid cross software as cross hardware communication. So this is something that uh, I started to, to teach to, to people. Oh, from Argentina also. also. Hi, Lisandro. Uh, and thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, you will learn so much more uh, from that, <laughs> from from today. Um, so I will cross cross software and cross hardware communication. Uh, this is something that I have actually prepared here. Okay, I had actually a, a super animation and then I lost it. Uh, can I do this? Boop. Great. Live manipulation. I'm not a streamer. I'm not a professional streamer. I'm discovering the streaming uh, live. Uh, life the, since uh, I started streaming some software, uh, some chat, chatting workshop. So bear with me some time in my, I'm just not as reactive as some people. Um, oh, hi, Heath Cooper. He's my uncle. Thank you for being here. I'm super happy. Um, so, so yeah, what you see here is uh, basically you you would uh, you would want maybe Unity, uh, uh, Resolume Arena, so video software, a three D software uh, generating real time, maybe a lighting software, maybe uh, some uh, motors and also sound with Ableton Live. It's not a problem if you don't know the software. Just imagine that as some video, some audio, some sound, uh, some sorry, some lights, and maybe some physical objects uh, like uh, LEDs or um, or motors or sensors and you, you could easily find yourself without some central uh, communication tool oh hi mike as well from uh, new york yes uh, parson drone uh, which i really want to to see you again uh, and come back and work with you um, so you, you can easily find yourself in those situations where the data the, the information uh, that is tr uh, transferred and communicated through softwares uh, is crossed. So this uh, this picture, uh, yeah, um, um, is representing that that you would have maybe some data over OSC or MIDI through Uni from Unity to Ableton, but then you want some sound interaction with the light, and the light would also maybe control a bit of LEDs or uh, or making something uh, vibrate. And also, you want obviously some effects uh, on the Vijing software uh, inter uh, in interaction with some sound. So, if you don't have a proper structure, you can uh, easily lost uh, lose uh, sense of where is what, what data is going where, and it becomes a real mess. Especially when uh, you are not alone in the project, and when you design that, somebody else will take over at some point and will not be happy with what you did. <laughs> um, so 
basically when I'm uh, when I'm designing a, a technologic show, when I'm designing the, the, the technologic aspect of a show or uh, or any project, I try when I do a, a diagram like this to avoid any cross uh, any crossing whatsoever in the in the in the diagram, and usually it will mean that it's a cleaner approach and you will have uh, uh, an easier time uh, finding where is the problem if you have some problems or what to change if you want to change some things. Um, so, chatting to the rescue. <laughs> um, and yeah, here you, you can see uh, a very simpler uh, system. Obviously, it's, uh, it, 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 it can have some, some extra, so, 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 some, uh, how do you say, some, I can't find this word, uh, some special uh, behavior sometime, but most of the time, if you can, a star shape for me makes a lot of sense. Sometimes you can have like two instances, for example, to communicate, to communicate over, uh, over a network from two computers, so two chatting could uh, communicate together, for example. But most of the time, yes, you will want to have this interface that's not doing anything else than uh, than um, directing, than ruling and controlling the other softwares, and also uh, checking, monitoring what's uh, what's on those softwares. Um, yeah, there, there are some softwares actually that, uh, that that try to 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 like do everything, and some software is really great for that. Uh, Touch designer, okay, for example, can do sound, can do video, can do light. Uh, can connect to to send to to, to physical st stuff and can do interface, uh, but it requires a lot of skills and you you often can't really just uh, yeah stamp your fingers and have something uh, fast and and try something fast. It, it requires a lot of things. I choose so this is also a bit personal, but I chose the approach to have a, a clean software, a really small software that will just do that and have uh, any other software be able to to connect. Uh, this way also you are more free to use whatever software you want because if you want, want to work with a sound designer maybe he has his solution for uh, for being uh, like for for working and you don't want to impose a way to do it so for me it's yeah it's more freeing it's more uh, flexible as a as a design uh, yeah I gather for, for the one who don't know at all or know uh, just a bit uh, I figured that uh, I realized that at some point uh, everybody used it for a specific thing but didn't have any clue of what else was done or what could be done and I'm struggling a bit to 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 get uh, feedbacks from users and to 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 to, to share some some projects some finished projects or even ongoing projects um, uh, yeah by the way there is a discord and there is a forum where you can put uh, your projects and at some point there will be a hashtag made with Chatagne on the website as well uh, and I would be super happy and I'm pretty sure a lot of users would be super happy for you to share that and for me it's also uh, it gets me uh, it, it, it gets ideas for me to gives me sorry it gives me ideas to on how to improve it and now that I, I, I know a bit more because even I am I, I'm not using it for all the cases so sometimes um, sometimes say it's cool for example so show control and monitoring is what I do mainly in my uh, in my field of work but I discovered that a lot of people actually are using it for inter uh, for escape games. Uh, interactive installation I do as well, but escape games, I, I didn't really um, think that it would be suited for that. And there is already one million um, uh, creating uh, cre uh, creating the escape game using Chatagne. And there is another one that I actually don't know where, I think Paris, but I'm not sure, uh, that is also using uh, Chatagne to, to control the overall um, adventure creation prototyping you will see as well that because it's really fast because the tools are really accessible when you know where they are uh, it's uh, actually a great tool for checking for verifying for uh, just animating near Paris oh 9 is the one uh, yes great 
Um, so yeah, you will find out a lot of things uh, that uh, that you can do easily, and then you just like open and uh, open and close. You don't need to have it always running during a, a, a show. I found out also that a lot of people are just using it to maybe like generate some data, and then they don't use it at all, or generate and export some data, but not using it live after. Uh, so a, a lot of ways to to use it. it. It became really a toolbox over the years. Um, Communication testing, so testing. So yeah, for me it's the same. Sometimes I have an installation not using Chatang, but because now I uh, I have such confidence in the software uh, and especially in the communication uh, layer on it that um, when something doesn't work and I'm uh, I'm called to maybe fix uh, something in a, in an installation or even on mines, uh, I will use Chatang just to check if OSC is sending good or, or receiving good uh, on on an end, for example, or or checking some um, data on Arduino, and it makes it really efficient for that as well. And protocol conversion and message routing as well, it's the same uh, that I, I'm not using it a lot, but I found out that a lot of people are using it like this, meaning that maybe they have just a MIDI hardware and uh, and they want to send OSC or the opposite way or to, with DMX. And yeah, uh, apparently they found out that it was quite uh, easy to do. Great. Um, with sound effects, great. So this is what we will be seeing today, checking today, learning today. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of things, some things you have just saw on the previous version, maybe some things you have discovered by yourself. I will try to also uh, talk about how I use it or how I think it should be used because sometimes there are many ways to do things and I think there are ways uh, that could be more um, simpler or maybe, uh, yeah, more efficient. Or at least it's how I designed them. Uh, again, if you have um, if you have comments on that and how you maybe you do it differently, I'm super interested to to check it and maybe I find out that it's better and, and I can change uh, the weights. Uh, like I can optimize also the software for that. Um, so yeah, we will see interface and workflow. Modules, module which is the core of uh, Chatagne, obviously, because this is where the interface uh, are connected. Uh, not interface, uh, all of the things, software, hardware. The state machine, which is the interaction part uh, of the of Chatagne, um, the live live control, real time control. Time machine, which allows way more to 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 do uh, timed uh, timed media creation. So. You will be able to animate in time. You will be able to to to, to trigger in time, uh, also to record. So yeah, all those things. Custom variables is where it gets interesting. It's where you can create memory. So it gets a bit closer to to to, to what you would do in programming, but trying to get it out of programming, and then you can actually use it for some deeper logic, some logic with uh, with a, a story, basically. Um, Module router is the one for a protocol conversion, so it's an easy way to transfer uh, from one module to other, to other so OSC to MIDI or uh, Wiimote to, to DMX, I don't know. The dashboard, uh, which has been uh, ongoing a lot of, uh, which, which has yeah, got a lot of a really good update last week, I'm really happy to show that today. The detective that has been uh, developed uh, from uh, for um, uh, yeah, from uh, an idea of, uh, from, uh, sorry, David, uh, David from Theories. Uh, yeah, we, we, we start thinking about the thing and I decided two weeks ago or three weeks ago to, to give it a try. It's very early stage, but it's very promising at the same time. So, oh, thanks, uh, Zemilia, to, to follow your, <laughs> to uh, subscribe to the channel. Whoever wants to do that can <laughs> as well. <laughs> Um, and scripting, we, I, I will try to not spend too much time on scripting. Last time, uh, scripting took me two hours uh, just to explain everything. So I, it will be just a, an overview of what, um, uh, yeah, of what, uh, what you can do or yeah, where you can go with that. Um, I think there, are, yeah, some things are missing, but it's okay. Uh, is it good? Yeah, interface and workflow. Okay, I just keep that few seconds so so it's easier for cutting the video after. Great. 
So first, for those who haven't done that yet, uh, here is a website of Shateng. So it's my name, my surname, first name, surname, yes, dot fr, Shateng, and then slash yen. Oh, actually, not slash yen. You can just do that. It will automatically find out. You get some stuff, the list of all the modules uh, that are uh, that we, we will go over as well. And here you can download it. So where there is a beta, uh, it's also here. Otherwise, the stable is on top. Bleeding Edge is always the latest version that has been compiled online. Whenever I do a modification, it gets compiled. So pretty much every day, this version changes. And for people who have bugs, maybe I will ask to try out this version. So uh, I, I don't release a beta for everyone or a stable for everyone, but just for the people having the problems and then I can do fast iteration. Usually it takes me like, uh, yeah, one or two hours from like uh, starting to, to debug and then to for the people to get the version to test. And because obviously there are some bugs always, <laughs> um, you can always find here the previous version. If you have a show, if you have something and you figure out that too many things have broke and you don't have time to repair them for the new version, then you can just download a, uh, a file, um, the version here for any distribution. Uh, and the beta version are here, so it's easier to, if you want just a stable, for example. Documentation, I will just go a bit of, uh, through, through a bit of that. The documentation, uh, which, uh, is in both French and English. If you want other language, feel free. I will give you uh, my credentials and you can just play with that. Um, so yeah, we, we I, I can present that a bit more after. You will find uh, find again a lot of things that I've, I'm saying today. It's not complete. Uh, there are uh, things missing, but most of the time it will uh, still be good enough for uh, remembering or, or just discovering. Then you get some tutorials, mostly in French, but uh, this one will go just here for the people who want, who are uh, tired of just seeing, seeing French everywhere. Uh, oh, one actually from Manuel in English here. Very special, I like though. Chatting tour. So this is something uh, that I will talk a bit more maybe in the end, but basically I'm touring with the software wherever uh, I can, if people can host me, if, uh, yeah, if weather is good or I don't know. Whatever. Right now, obviously, it's kind of uh, slow, but uh, yeah, don't hesitate if you feel like you can organize a workshop at your place uh, somewhere uh, in your city. Then I would be happy to discuss with that and figure out where uh, how we can deal with that. Uh, this is how I meet people. Uh, there is a forum as well. Um, hop, um, forum here. There is a forum that is active uh, quite. Uh, the Discord is quite active now, a bit more even. Uh, so don't hesitate. There are a lot of nice people willing to to, to help you. Uh, yeah, and me as well. So that being said, let's dive into Châtaigne 1.7.0. Please go to this version uh, if you are not. Um, so, so we can, because a lot of things have changed and I will mainly uh, show the things uh, on this version. Okay. So interface first, you can see here what, what, what can appear an interface that can be maybe a bit uh, complex or uh, frightening, but we will go over and it will be over soon. Don't hesitate. Actually, it will be like this. I think when you get to, um, when you get to download it for the first time. So these are panels. You get a lot of different panels and you can remove them. For example, this help panel, I can just pop, pop it out and I can put it back here or collapse it with another hop. And yeah, so, so you can arrange the, the, the interface as you want. Uh, the, you, you, you will find out that there are a lot of different panels, but I try to arrange it the way, uh, in a way that it's kind of efficient for the first use. You can find things. Um, and you can lock the panels now, so in the new version. So yeah, thanks you Antoine for this uh, uh, ID. Basically locking the panel will make you, so right now I'm actually clicking and it doesn't do anything <laughs> uh, because uh, it's locked. So it's 
it's it allows to not uh, to not drag them uh, involuntarily really I'm pretty sure that if I uh, close them <laughs> they will be closed but at least yeah first attempt to, to this thing uh, I think it got quite well uh, you can st actually lock panel you can still uh, move them right so yeah um, here if you have some uh, uh, yeah if you don't remember or you're just discovering there is this help uh, panel that will just show you something some stuff uh, and sometimes <laughs> some uh, shortcuts that may be outdated actually but yeah uh, if you find out like if it's missing something here same you can just tell me and I will uh, uh, change it or add it uh, really really soon uh, really fast great I will just put the help here because I will be explaining it we have then for the main uh, for the main interface we have the modules here that I will go over this is where you will create your um, yeah uh, create your, your connection to, through uh, to the different uh, other elements that you want to control or get information from here you will uh, the state machine is where you create your state right right click state or double click or this plus here so every time there is a plus it means that you can add some stuff most of the time you can just right click as well and if there is only one uh, uh, one type of element that you can add in this panel, then double click often will also uh, allow you to, to just create it like this. Um, so state machine is where you create, create interaction. I will not go over those ones. It will be for a bit later. Um, the inspector is actually one of the most important because whenever you are selecting something, let's say I'm selecting this state, for example, so when I select him, I'm, I'm selecting it, it will be highlighted in orange here. And you can find on the right, on the inspector, um, all the, the parameters for this state. Um, so whenever I click somewhere, this is where I will uh, be able to, yeah, to, 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 to edit things. If I create a sequence, for example, and then now I can have access to the play, stop, pause, the current time, total time, the play speed, the frequency at which place, all those things. So, inspector here, uh, and it allows, yeah, basically to not have uh, a too big, too, too big of an interface, but you just edit what you want. Multi-editing, just uh, so you know, is still not supported right now. Uh, I'm working towards it, but it's complex. Then the logger will be your friend. So the logger here uh, is the one to to log to show if some things are going good things are going bad things that you should maybe take care of uh, yeah uh, and you can also cre create your own logs like output some custom messages here which can be really really efficient hi Joe, thank you for joining uh, so yeah it can be really efficient especially if you don't have the, the if you are not uh, maybe with everything uh, that you need to control, you are just simulating because it's Corona time and you don't you are not on stage or in your escape game, um, escape room, um, uh, yeah, structure building. So you want just to to simulate and say, okay, it's I, I see this message, so it means that it would it should be there, uh, it should it should do this. Uh, so yeah, it's debugging basically for the one who program. Uh, so once for program but yeah basically here you will you will be able to to follow uh, a bit more what what's happening um yeah then sequence a sequence editor for all all, all of the time machine which I, what i call time machine so time based here you will create uh, custom variable we'll see i chose to let it here because often you don't have some uh, there is not much uh, try to right click sometimes there are some stuff uh, interesting be curious uh, yeah, it should not be should not be too uh, should not get too uh, more complex than that. You get some uh, nice shortcuts also already here. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope uh, it's still good. I hope the, the microphone is not too high, not too low. Uh, yeah, got a professional microphone this time. Thank you, Zonendeck, for that. I'm uh, currently hosted at Berlin. Um, so let's go over, I prepared that, the modules. Okay, so here is a list, I think complete list of the modules uh, that are currently here. Um, 
it's divided in three in three categories uh, in this actually it's divided in a bit more uh, in the in the software but I, I decided to, to, to make this distinction between uh, open modules, which are all the modules that I actually, that Shateng doesn't know about the final structure. For example, OSC, uh, I will not, uh, thank you, Jamie and Joe for feedbacks. Um, so uh, for example, OSC or MIDI or DMX, uh, the Shateng doesn't necessarily know what's on the other end of that. Like you will send to a software, but there is no API because you made the software or the software is not known to, ch to chatting. So these are what I, what I call open, uh, open, what I call protocols basically, because you are really communicating on a, on a, on a message level, not, you don't know what the software is capable, the end software or hand hardware is capable of. So you will just create your own API basically. Um, so those are, and I, I try to be quite uh, complete in that. Uh, I think it's missing MQTT, but apart from that, and actually you can even do it now with a WebSocket, but yeah, um, apart from that, I am pretty sure that it's able to communicate with almost anything that can communicate in, at least in the art and entertainment industry. Um, if not, uh, I would be happy to, to, to know which protocols you are using that are not there. We'll do a quick water break. Hydration break. It's more less ambiguous. Um, so yeah, those are the protocols and it allows for, uh, yeah, for basically communicating with anything. Then you get hardware as well. So actually maybe software, the last line first. Uh, so the last line, Resolume Arena, live, this is a stream deck then, which actually should be in hardware. I, missed, I did a mistake there. Watch out, which is a, a media server. Uh, then we have Reaper and ManMapper, Milumin, PowerPoint <laughs> through a plugin that I wrote, QLab, thanks to, thanks to Bruno. This is the first uh, native module that has not been uh, created by myself. We have HeavyM, uh, which is a video software as well, and Delight, which is a light software. So those ones are, are actually built on top of the protocol modules. Uh, but the big difference is that we know how to control them. We know because they have a documentation that, uh, that is public and that, uh, that uh, shows how to control them with OSC or MIDI or anything. Most of them are actually OSC, but then you, uh, it's, it's a way to, so for example, I don't know, um, QLab uh, will have some, some differentiation saying, okay, if you want to launch a sequence or, or, or trigger something, then you can use this message. And because uh, it's, uh, we are able to know that, we are able to create a module that already knows all, all of those things. And then there is hardware because sometimes hardware can be a bit painful to connect and uh, to, 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 to integrate and, and, uh, and use. Uh, obviously, it's, this one is obviously not complete, but <laughs> Um, it, I tried also to, to, to get to the main, main uh, yeah, the common uh, hardware that, uh, that we think. And again, if you have uh, requests or ideas about different hardware, uh, please tell me in the comments or on Discord or on the forum. So we have remote, we have microphone, because for me, microphone is just uh, input as anything else. Like you can just uh, get some information from that. Speakers, because it's an output. Um, we, uh, this is Joy-Con, yeah, Joy-Con, Nintendo Switch, uh, like the uh, step, uh, the older, uh, no, the younger uh, sister of the Wiimote. Uh, we have joysticks, gamepads, uh, Kinect V2, not V1, and sorry, Mac users and Linux users only on Windows right now, uh, because for of simplicity. Uh, and then it's a keyboard <laughs> and mouse, yeah. Uh, those ones also have some limitation. So, some some modules have some limitation on other uh, on other platforms and Windows. Uh, but yeah, most of the time everything should should work. I hope. Maybe Wiimote, Wiimote and Joy-Con have some problems because of the Bluetooth. But yeah, again, don't hesitate to feedback to do, to get to give feedback. Okay. So modules. Poof. We find them in the module section, and it's here. 
protocol and you find again exactly those ones. So you get OSC, OSC query, and, uh, and the new ones uh, that are just uh, fresh from last week uh, mm -hmm. are WebSocket client and WebSocket server that allows a lot of, to open a lot more uh, modules. So I hope to, to see maybe we, have, we will have actually an OBS uh, module at some point. Sorry. Hardware, uh, Sanka, da, 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 da. and you can see already here community modules that I didn't talk about because those ones, you don't have them. It's a module that you can find here in the community module manager. Basically, it allows anybody to create your own modules based on the existing ones. Uh, I will not really go over that through, from uh, to, in this session, but just know that there are some modules here and it's likely that if you need something uh, very specific, uh, but using one of those protocols, then you can actually, uh, yeah, check here or ask somebody to do it. And it's way simpler than actually creating an, a native module for Shatani. Uh, yeah. So for example, launch Mini, which is a, a, a particular uh, MIDI device. And I created this, uh, uh, this module to be able to to control it easily and not having to deal with the MIDI uh, notes that are used or like how to to, to put maybe a, a precise color and it's MIDI encoded so now I can just do it with a color which is nice uh, hardware software and the ones that you we didn't see before is generator so metronome and signal are two um, two modules that will just help you generate some data if you don't have anything with you. Uh, so, so you can just, uh, or, or it, it can actually be for a lot of use, but metro, metronome will just like, I would put something in a, in a regular fashion and signal will be a continuous signal with different shapes that you can simulate, uh, which is very efficient if you just want to, yeah, output data or test some stuff. System, you get time, which allows you to know the time. Like I would click on it and I will just check on the inspector right there. Uh, because when I click on the module, yes, I can check whatever the module is about here. And here you can uh, you can see that there is uh, a lot of information about the time, day, month, everything that you can use then to maybe if you are doing an installation on in, in a museum uh, and you want something in the summer or in the winter or uh, every ta every day at six, uh, but Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, so all the things you can do with uh, with this uh, with this module that you can like use, uh, uh, and it's okay, Mile. We can, <laughs> you know, you know it already. You have seen, you have seen all the workshops. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so yeah, this this, uh, this kind of module lets you, uh, yeah, uh, you you use uh, shutting for uh, different times and 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 have different interactions or different rules depending on that. Uh, OS here will allow you uh, to know the system which can be good and also the main local ip like it's kind of arbitrary how it's done but uh, you get an ip here that is most probably the local ip and you can send it so sometimes it's nice if you want to have automatic advertising on, of some things or you have your own protocol that involves sending the ip then you you you, you know the ip here there are other ways to know the uh, the ip uh, in the in the program but this is where you get it inside the whole, the whole logic and you can uh, do some some stuff like shutdown reboot wake on LAN, or open a file or kill an app or launch a command or even and that is only on windows but set window parameters and you can like change the decoration or put a window on full screen on the second screen or things like this so yeah um, yeah sometimes i just try to do those modules uh, those commands just to check if it works or not if you don't use them then it's okay as well obviously Great, uh, so a module, I will just go with OSC to, to, to check and I will assume that most of you know OSC, for those who don't know, it's a network protocol. It's just a way to communicate through different softwares, e either on the same computer or on, uh, or on a different computer of the same network. Uh, it has been widely adopted by the art community for controlling and communicating between the different softwares. Uh, you can even now use uh, ESP32 or like uh, Arduino uh, 
on a, on a network like Arduino with Ethernet or, or Wi-Fi like ESP32 IP, ESP8266, uh, and you can just communicate uh, through OSC uh, with them, which is really very very efficient, easy to use, uh, artist friendly. Okay, so anatomy of a module. This module, for example, OSC has, you can see already here when I created, so I have a nice logo, I see here something. First thing, when you don't know what something is about, you can just wait a bit and then you will get this nice tooltip, uh, which explain whatever, so, uh, whatever this uh, element is about. So enable, disable this element. So basically if I do that, it's disabled and it, will, it won't uh, be active anymore. It won't receive, it won't send anything. Here I see incoming activity signal. Here I see outgoing activity signal meaning that um, this is a very efficient way to see if things are uh, uh, like received by the module or if things are sent by the module. Then when I edit it, uh, yeah, when I select it, I can see all the things here. Um, those you can actually uh, yeah, uh, collapse and expand like this. Uh, so I find here the same parameter actually, this is exactly this one, right? Uh, Login coming outgoing, which will uh, enable me to allow me to to see in the logger here uh, if something is uh, anything that will be received or anything that will be um, sent. So uh, very efficient as well. You can just activate, deactivate whenever you want, and uh, yeah, it makes it uh, very very yeah very easy. Then you get some parameters. Uh, so parameters will be anything related to this module that you can configure so it's exactly the way you want it. For example, do I want an input or do I want outputs? In OSC you can actually have many outputs because you can see here this green one. The yellow one is duplicate by the way, but yeah, I can create an another output here. And my in my input, so if I don't want input, I can just deactivate, same, uh, same logo, right? Um, so now it's uh, it's automatically collapsed, and you can see here actually that I don't have my incoming and I don't have my log incoming here because it cannot receive data. So if I activate again, I can see I can choose my local port, uh, and I, I see in my logger here now receiving on port twelve thousand. So this is also something that's uh, interesting for me. And when use of the logger, I can see that it's good. It's been uh, successfully binding, binding the port and now listening. So, And here I will see my IP. That can be very interesting if you want to, to actually send something to this computer uh, through the network. Um, you can use uh, like 127.0.0.1 if you are not say it's the same computer. But if you are not, and for example, for this demo, I will be uh, showcasing with my phone that I hope, yeah. So I'm using touch OSC. So here you will see uh, IPs that are detected as uh, local IPs, like LAN IPs, but sometimes you have weird LAN setup. And then here, if you, if you don't find it here, you can actually find all your IPs here, all the IPs for all the interfaces. I have a lot because I have a VMware, um, multiple VMware uh, images, and I have some uh, VPN. So yeah, those are all the, the sorry. <laughs> The IPs that uh, you can access a computer to uh, with. And then same OSC output, I will get local, so I can just do that if I want uh, to, to force sending on the same computer, or I can just put an IP here. Uh, and I actually, here is a comp, so yeah, this is a, if you have um, zero conf enable uh, softwares, you can actually find them here and it will auto set everything. Considering that you have ManMapper, for example, has that. So if you have ManMapper somewhere, you can actually just do that and it will select automatically. You can select it automatically here and the port. A bit back here, auto add uh, is where uh, you will want to auto auto add. <laughs> uh, auto add, uh, yeah, it's pretty self explanatory Actually, let's just go there, just so you see. Aut add automatically any message that is received. Sometimes I feel useless when I do that because obviously it's all, all written, but anyway. Add automatically any message that is received and try to create the corresponding value depending on the message content. So for example, I have here uh, my OSC, uh, touch OSC app. If you don't know, uh, it's, already, um, it's already set up with the right IP and everything. 
actually this network where am I, uh, I am now is not uh, allowing for uh, zero conf, but you would see Chatagne OSC here already detected uh, on, on most network you work actually and you just need to, you just have to click on it. Uh, so yeah, if, if I show you uh, how, it, how it looks like, this is just a small tool to check this kind of uh, service and you can see like Chatagne OSC because the module is called OSC. If I, I will call, uh, I will call this one my phone, uh, phone touch OSC because yeah, double clicking, I can rename, right? And you can actually here see here in this little tool that I have that now it's called Chatagne phone touch OSC. So I, on a, let's say normal network, uh, la, uh, local network, I would actually be able to see it here uh, because touch OSC have that. Anyway, so touch OSC, touch OSC will allow me to send basic values, right? Uh, one address. So uh, OSC message, again, for those who don't know, it's one address and one or uh, like zero or more arguments. Arguments can be numbers, can, they can be strings, uh, characters, uh, or yeah, other things, but basically that. Um, and so you see that if I just do this, now it's because I'm in auto add, it receives the message and uh, it automatically added sl this slash one slash fader one, which is the address linked to this slider. Uh, because I'm on auto, uh, auto add, if I do with the second one, I get the second one, easy. Uh, so I get those, those, those values, it's really cool. And which, which actually leads me to this uh, new, uh, new container here, values. Values is anything that a module will have as input information. Uh, this is what the data you will use uh, to make uh, rules to, to, to create interactions. So anything that a, a module can know from the, from, from its, uh, software, from the software it's connected to or the hardware it's connected to uh, will be shown in the values here. Scripts will go a, a bit after uh, and comments, which is a, uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big one. So values, basically, you can just think like this. Uh, oh, hey, hey, Etienne, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. You, you already know the stuff. So yeah, uh, values are the input, comments are the output, basically. So comments are anything that you can do with a module. So this one, not really interesting because basically you can do only custom message. Script callback, we'll not talk about it right now, but custom message here, uh, you can just, uh, yeah, create a custom message because it's OSC and I don't know uh, wh how you, like Shateng doesn't know how uh, you want to use it. So you can still create a custom message. Command tester here, it will not be saved in your file, by the way, it's some, just a tester. So it's a very easy way to just test some stuff and see if it works. Um, let's say, for example, if I go to, some, uh, to a MIDI module, just to show you some comments. MIDI module, so I get other things like um, uh, the device to connect to, I will do that later. And uh, uh, some information if it's connected or not here. Same, the values are here with the auto add. So if I pr plug some uh, MIDI controller and I start touching, then you will get some, uh, you will get some data in here as a MIDI notes or the controls, control change or anything that is MIDI related will just appear here. Uh, and the comments, you can see that it's already a bit more interesting. You get not on, not off, full not control change and all uh, those things, uh, even C6 message or, yeah. So this is basically everything that you can do with the module, everything that you can send to, uh, to it, to, to the external interface. So yeah, this is, this is about it actually. And there are templates and templates, we will go a bit after, uh, we will see, see that a bit after. It allows you to like customize in a nice way, a lot of things. Um, so I get some, yeah, I get some stuff here. Maybe I will just uh, show you this one. This one is 2D, right? Uh, X, Y. And you see that it has been already added because it's sending one address and two values, numbers. Then it's adding, um, it's adding like this uh, to, yeah, uh, what I call a point 2D parameter. So basically it's another type of a parameter. Uh, parameters that you can use are numbers, colors, strings, uh, integers, integers, polyons, like toggles, uh, 2D and 3D. Right now it's about that and uh, yeah, and lists. Right. 
what, what I call enum, like enumerator. Um, yeah. So what did I prepare after that, actually? State machine. Oh, OK. Yeah, OK, let's go through that. <laughs> um, so for the sake of having something to do, I will go over the sound card. So I, I will let you like figure out uh, the modules, how like every every module, because it would be really take a lot of time to go over every module. But you, I think you get the idea of um, how you can uh, use that. Uh, some modules can only take in input. Some modules can only uh, do output, and so some modules can do uh, both. Um, ju just a side note: a, a lot of people will just yeah, I get excited or I like, get curious about chatting because it seems that you can do a lot of things. But most of the time, if you don't have any, um, how to say, any project to use it, yeah, then it may it may seem a bit uh, yeah empty because obviously you need to control things. You need to want to do something. Uh, it's not like yeah, it's not uh, 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 how to say a creative software. It's not a creation software per se. It's really a control software, some some things that comes when you know how to what you want to do with it. So I'm using Resolume. You can use any software in the list or any software at, uh, that is able to be controlled. Um, I'm using Resolume because I like to do the demos uh, like this, and I uh, uh, in the same way, it's a good way to thank uh, Resolume, uh, the Resolume team, to uh, uh, yeah, to allow me to use to, to use the software for the demos and everything. Uh, they've been giving me a key so I could uh, work on the modules and uh, yeah and show it. Um, so you can actually use uh, the free not the free version the uh, trial or arena demo version sorry uh, of this or you can use other software that uh, that accepts um, uh, OSC for example for for this demo it will be the same. Uh, yeah, so I have Resolume. For those who don't know, it's not a problem. Basically, I click on those small thumbnails and uh, this one, clip one or column one, layer one is this video and column two, layer two is this one because it's on the same layer, they replace each other. So I have two videos that I can access through this matrix, right? Uh, clip one, layer one, clip two, layer two. No, clip two, layer one, sorry. Um, okay, I will put a bit more just because it's fun. Plume, and I can do, yeah. Great. So let's say I want to th uh, sing notes and uh, I want to trigger some uh, some videos through those notes. Um, so it's a basic interaction. If I sing uh, D, the note D, uh, then uh, I will launch one clip. So what do I need for that? And this is uh, for me the, fir the first uh, like the first thing to do when you open the software and when you design your, 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 your inter uh, interactivity. Uh, I need then a sound card because I need to get my microphone. I need to, to get uh, uh, my, my notes. Uh, and what do I want to control? I want to control Resolume. Fortunately, it's here. Yay. So I have sound card. I have Resolume. You see that Resolume is only output, but it's good. I actually only need output for this. So the audio module is actually a bit more complex, obviously, for, uh, than the other one because it's audio, it's always more complex. But you can actually, yeah, again, most of the things are uh, commented and everything. You can see the values. What can I get from the values? I can get the overall volume. I can get, and I have a special pitch detection, especially for this demo. So pitch detection, actually, I need to activate it here. I will choose MPM. You can actually know, uh, yeah, get information of what is it. Uh, monophonic sound, so like, like my voice is better uh, detected through MPM. And here I will, for example, get the microphone. So per, uh, um, uh, yeah, by default, the uh, input here is um, deactivated and here as well, just to optimize the process because if you only want, most of the time people will want we want only output uh, for timelines or playing audio, but not really uh, doing uh, audio input. So by default, when you create uh, the sound card module, it's deactivated, so it's more performant. I try to optimize everything, uh, so it's not like a pain to do to, to activate it. But by default, you don't have anything to deactivate. So uh, when when you actually want to to have optimized an optimized version of your project, 
So I will activate all those channels and suddenly I already see the volume here kicking in. So this is when I speak. And then all those frequencies, the frequency pitch. Ah, uh, uh, oh, not bad. Okay, so this is a D. Uh, 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 uh. Great, D and G. So again, this is because my pitch detection is done here. I have some input gain, activity threshold. If I, if I don't want those like uh, fake detection, I can just get on the activity threshold a bit more. And now it will not detect uh, um, uh, before a certain volume. Uh, okay, so now it's actually way more um, clean, way cleaner. Great, I have those two modules, but I don't really know how to link them. First, Resolume, I'm not sure that it's actually well uh, well uh, configured. I'm not sure that uh, this is, uh, this is uh, able to, to control. So what I will do, I have Resolume on the background here, and I have Chatang on the side like this. And what I will do is go to my current uh, common tester. So first I can maybe check that. It's, it's already configured by default with the default parameters in Resolume. So remote port is 7,000. I can just check in uh, Arena actually preference and OSC here. And my OSC input is activated with a uh, port 7,000 here. So it should be good. Uh, I will just try with my command tester. It's paint for that. So what can I do? I can still do custom message because maybe I didn't integrate all the commands, but launch stop here, composition, I can stop everything. What one I actually want to try is one to launch a clip. So launch stop, launch a clip. And here I, I find again my layer and my clip. So what you see here is the OSC address and what it will actually do in the end is sending an OSC address, but it's making this nice interface easy to use, not needing to create this um, this address that uh, will change automatically when I change that. You can just choose layer and clip, or I actually you can choose selected clip as well because um, yeah, Resolume can do that. Um, but here you can just select your layer and clip. And this is where uh, Shatang gets nice also with uh, software that it already knows about, in that you don't need to, uh, yeah, you don't need to work with the uh, OSC address, uh, addressing and all those things that can be a bit, uh, sometimes really, really painful. So yeah, I want to have the layer one clip one and I will want to test that. So I have my small button trigger here, trigger this consequence, perfect, poof. Okay, seems to work. Let's try with clip two, clip two, poof. Okay, seems to work. Great. By the way, auto trigger here is something uh, that I added to, to do quickly, quick changes when you want just to try out different values. So when you do that, any parameter that is changed here uh, will actually trigger automatically uh, this button basically, will click this button. So. So when you do that, uh, you don't need to uh, to do trigger, but sometimes you want to set up before and trigger uh, at this time. Okay, everything good? I hope so. Nobody is talking, so I guess everybody is listening or somebody are leaving. <laughs> um, some people. Anyway, um, so what to do now? Well, I will create my interaction. How to create that? Here. Add state, poof. So this state in the state machine here. Oh, so, uh, yeah, we are in the state machine. Uh, so in the in the state machine here, uh, I can have a lot of states, right? And each state will contain a, a, a different action, a different rules. Um, right now, I, I separated in two different rules. Easy start. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have it really, uh, yeah, complete as I said uh, earlier. So anybody can actually take on this uh, and, um, yeah, and start learning. Action and mapping are the two different rules that you can do. Um, action will be something uh, at a precise time, punctual, right? So, so an event basically. If something, if uh, I, I check those rules, if I, if I check those condition, what I call condition, then uh, I will want to do this. And if not, then maybe I want to do something else. So yeah, this is a if then else situation, uh, which is very known in programming. And this is how you can do this. So this this will always be verified, but it will only happen once when, uh, when the thing is uh, validated. I need it then to be 
uh, uh, not verified again to be verified again to trigger again. Um, and on the opposite, you get mappings and mappings are something that will get an input value, potentially filter it, you don't even need to do that, um, and then output it, um, output it to whatever you want. But it's more continuous. It's more something that you, you will get and not check it necessarily. You will just, uh, yeah, work on it and, and output this. So you, you, you have a relationship between the input and output in this way. Um, so it's called mapping because it's adapting the value in input to what you want in output, basically. Yay, new subscriber. So I will create an action for what I want to do because I, as I said it before, if I sing a D, then I want to uh, ch uh, launch a clip. So this is what I will do. Conditions here, which is already pre-filled with a lot of different things, but what is interesting here for me is a from input value. And I will be able to select from values that are uh, available on my modules here. So Resolume doesn't have any values, so it's uh, because it's an output only. Um, module, but some card has a uh, volume here, here and pitch detection, all the ones we have seen before. What I want to check is a note and it's already here uh, set to equal. I can check equal or different uh, on the notes. And here I can select, for example, my D. Uh, 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 uh. Great. So you can see that when I sing a D, this comes becomes green, this becomes green. Ha, 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 ha. So great, I will be able to use that. How to do that actually? Oh yeah, there is this small UI bug in the later version. Uh, oh yeah, only once. The voice of an angel, yes, you know it. Um, thank you. Then you have consequence true. What to do when it's actually going green, going validated, when the condition is verified? Well, Resolume, launch clip, we know this one, launch clip, uh, launch start, launch clip, one. Uh, and done. If I sing a D, then I launch the clip. So kind of long to explain, but if you are doing it uh, on your own, you will see that it takes roughly 15 seconds to put everything in place. Um, okay, maybe 30. And I can just, so I encourage you to do that. So Resolume Demo, I will call it, for example, or Voice to Video, for example. And then here, uh, D uh, uh, Clip 1. So I'm just, yeah, take. I, I would take the, the habit of renaming everything because uh, it's, um, it's a good habit to do to to, to get, <laughs> uh, and it's not uh, it's not really that uh, it, take, it doesn't take that long. But then, yeah, you see how it's already looking better. What I what I can do is uh, uh, click on it, and I can do Control C, Control V. I will do another one to to sing another note, for example. So I will do Control C, and I can do Control V, and it will just uh, copy it here. I can do also Control D, like duplicate. Ooh and it will create another one. Again, I will rename that G clip two. And I don't like that it's not written so great. And what, what I want to do on this one, I want to change this D into G and this clip into two. Uh, 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 uh. Perfect, it works. So great. Uh, so, okay, this is basic interactions of uh, how you want to how you can detect some stuff create rules and do that um, i can if i want uh, to disable them because i see that now when i'm talking sometimes it detects notes still uh, i will just disable them like this right and now i can i, I can still ah, 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 and you see that nothing is happening uh, for uh, this reason also, uh, okay, I will, I will show that now because a lot of people who already know software are saying, okay, I want to see new things. I will show you one new thing that is this one. It's a, it's a toggler, <laughs> it's, a, it's a toggle mode. So let's ditch that and do another one, right? And I will do a switch, I will call it switch on, uh, 
on loud yeah switch on noise uh, how do you say yeah switch on noise so what i can do is go to the sound card check the volume now so what i what i see here is the volume it's the same as this one in the values right it's just a, a feedback so it's easier and what I want to check here now, because we are actually checking a number and not uh, and not um, a note, we can actually check a lot of different things. Like, um, is it uh, yeah, is it uh, more or less than something? So for for me, I want to check that my voice is more than this because now I'm I'm, I'm talking. But ha, when I do a big sound, then uh, it will get um, validated for a small amount of time. Ha ha. Great, I'm really uh, loving this uh, professional microphone. Usually it doesn't go as good as that. So that's cool. And I can actually do something like consequence true will be uh, launch the clip one, right? We will stay on those ones and ha, it's good. Ha, ha, ha. You can see that it's going like it's launching again. Ha, 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 ha. So that works. Actually, you can also see in the trigger hole here. Ha, ha, ha. I can actually create new, more consequences, right? I can, I, I, I could create launch clip one and launch on the layer two, for example, because they are adding two clip one. So if I put this here, now it will launch the two at the same time. Ha! And now you get those, the two clips at the same time, right? Or you could use one to send a video and one other, and another one to, to, yeah, and another one to maybe uh, launch music on the software or, I don't know, start a, a fan or something, whatever. Be creative. Um, so yeah, this works. Ha, 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 great. But what I want is that it's... Uh, actually, maybe what I can do is also that. In the consequence files, so basically consequence files is when it will go from validated to not validated. If, if, if it could go back to the state of not validating. So when it goes here from green to gray. Resolume and maybe stop composition here. Or yeah, stop composition. Ha! And you see that, ha! As soon as I stop my voice, sorry if it's a bit loud for you, but yeah, as, as soon as I stop my voice, I, I, I will maybe do that, right? Uh, as soon as I stop my voice, it, it, it triggers this one because if it's more, it will go this way. It will go on the first, uh, on the true, and if it's not, it will go on the false. Uh, okay. But maybe what I want, and sometimes it's it's uh, you, you you I could do it with two two actions and stuff. But sometimes it's really nice if you want just to, to transform this thing into a toggle. So sometimes you have buttons and you want them to to be used as toggles, and that is actually really easier to do here now because with this action uh, with this. Activated, it like it gets colored basically when it when it's done. And now, ha! Huh, it will stay like this, and it needs to be revalidated again. That I just did. <laughs> I will just put that a bit more. Um, it needs to be revalidated again to 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 actually invalidate it to switch its state. So basically, a momentary action that you want, like a momentary button, like on off on off, you will then have a on off. So it's, it's really, yeah, a lot of people were like um, interested in this behavior and now you get it and you don't need to have like a lot of weird way of doing it with two actions or I don't know. So, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's, let's say that then what I want to do is controlling maybe the rotation of this or like an effect. I really love this mode, yes. I figured. Uh, so maybe in the mapping here, I will want to uh, control, use also the volume of my sound, right? Uh, when trying to not speak too much, uh, too, 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 too loud, so, so it's not uh, doing things. But what I want with this is uh, to control, for example, um, the rotation of this, uh, of this video or the whole layer actually, because I can do that on Resolume. So let's do this filter. Uh, no, I have this, right? Yeah, I, actually, I will actually filter. So how, how does work a mapping maybe? How does a mapping work? Input in the new 1.7 version, you can here uh, have multiple inputs now. So you can combine inputs or just have them batched, uh, batch controlled 
which is really nice. And then output with like many inputs, only one commands, uh, one OSC message. So this is also uh, something very nice for a lot of people who wanted to maybe send only one message, but from a different input, then now you can do that here. Uh, it will get even more, uh, even better after when controlling uh, the frequency and stuff. But yeah, right now it's already good. Uh, yeah, I could use different th things. Right now I will only use one. Uh, and don't worry, the updates from the 1.6 to the 1.7 uh, is now good. So you can uh, convert your files with the update button. Really, it, it should work. <laughs> Um, filters will allow me to modify this value. Ha! 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 Come on! Ha! Great! <laughs> um, filters will allow me to modify this value. I will talk a bit less, uh, less <laughs> loud. Uh, I have a noise cancelling head, uh, headphones, so sometimes I speak loud. Filters will allow you to modify this value in the way you want. So you can actually get the exact range or type of value that you want. For me, for example, I see that I would want like a full range, but now it's only like this uh, small part that is used because I could actually like crush the microphone. Um, so in filter, I can do a remap, remap. And what will me what will allow, what it will allow me to do is now use custom input range, and I see that I can go over maybe one zero dot two something like this, up, and I want zero dot one. So now I see that I'm using my full range here from zero dot uh, like zero dot zero to zero dot two to zero to one. Ha 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 ha! Great. So now I can actually use this way better because what I want to do is now resolume i don't get the same comments actually because i'm in a mapping so i can't like uh, launch a clip because it's uh, launching a clip is something it's an event it's something that uh, that is done at, at one time but if uh, mapping as we said earlier is something continuous so what we can do is control parameters basically so i will control video parameter so right now by default is controlling the opacity you can already see that it works ha 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 Great. What I wanted to control is rotation, and because I know resolution and this uh, like chatting knows resolution, I'm not chatting. Uh, here I can use rotate Y. So if I do this now, you can see that it's it kept the past opacity. So actually, I will just go here and do this. So I put it by the opacity that has been changed by chatting. And already it's uh, changing the rotation. Great. And I can, so, ha, ha, <laughs> great. It's like, it's already like some nice control, um, but it's kind of jittery because uh, the, the, the sound card is very reactive. And so it's, it's nice because I get a lot of data and I can use that, but at the same time, it's really not the animation that I expect to be. Uh, so what I can use is another filter, for example, and this smooth filter here, and I will just crank up this and now I get this nice smoothed up. Great. So yeah, like this, you can already see uh, how it works. Actually, I will use one more because here you can see that it's not going back completely when I'm, uh, yeah, when I'm, uh, when I'm not uh, speaking because there is always a, some background noise. So what I can do is actually here, do a remap and a curve map. And my curve map here from zero to one, here from zero to one. So the horizontal is the input and the vertical is the output. And I can see here, when I don't speak, this small noise. So what I can do is just put that back a bit like this. Great. And now when I don't speak, this noise is just like exactly where I want it to be. And so I could do that with the remap, but what is cool with this one as well is that first you have visualization, but you can also like change uh, exactly how it's sensitive. I want maybe it to be uh, more sensitive towards the start. So I don't need to, to speak a lot to, to have it move a lot. Or in the other way, maybe I want it to be really not so sensitive at first. So you can see that it's only doing small or into a small rotation when I speak normally, but then when I start speaking way more, then it's like a lot of motion. So you can really go crazy. You can even add points with double click, boom, boom. 
and then you get you get like really crazy it goes back and on and yeah so it's a it's a remapper basically um yeah curve map uh, yeah curves you can do a lot of things but i will show that more in a timeline already uh 8 15 wow uh, it will be long i'll tell you <laughs> um great i have yeah it's kind of it's kind of cool already um just what I like here is that there is asynchronous and synchronous. And when you when you do that, like basically if I click asynchronous, then I have something different, uh, smoothing, a different smoothing when it goes up and when it goes down. So I can, uh, maybe I want actually not very reactive, like a view meter, very reactive on, uh, on, on the raising, but not on the fall. So if I do this, now I have this nice boom, boom. So it goes really fast, but then it goes uh, very slow. Actually, I don't want the whole thing because it, it, do, it does one full turn, so I will remap that to 0 0.5. Boom, 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 boom. Great. Okay. Seems not bad. Okay, so this is a mapping. Ha! Great. Um, I hope you get the idea of what you could do with all of that. Um, there are a lot of ways to use them. Maybe uh, we have a Q&A in the end. So if you have, if you have questions, I, I will uh, be happy to, to, to show more. OK, we have that. And this is pretty much what I want to show for now on the, on the, in the, uh, sorry, in this. Uh, ah, also, I can, I can disable this one. And now I can speak freely and it will not like get all weird. Same with this one, right? So I can add uh, other states. If I activate, deactivate the whole state, this now is uh, not, it has not this blue contour. Uh, and then uh, the blue line, uh, this one has. So this one is active, this one is not. But basically everything here um, is not active anymore. Uh, I can just do this, poof, and this one is active, so it will work again, so you can just put things, drag and drop, uh, it's fun. Small uh, small here is a small thing for people who don't know. You can actually also do that if I want to create another mapping, for example, with Resolume. I can just uh, drag and drop the, mo the module here and then action consequence and I can already do something here or mapping output and I can do already something here. So if I do action, for example, and I will do launch stop, launch multi-clip, which I will use for my next one. Actually, I will do it here, boom, action, launch, launch multi-clip hop it already created this um, action with this consequence and you can actually do the same with i will create a module an osc module to control with my phone this time phone osc great i will just check that it works it works i have those fader here i have some buttons as well you can see here and then I can also drag and drop this inside the action and use input and maybe uh, push one, for example. Great. Now I have already this condition and this uh, this condition and this consequence. I didn't even go to the action yet. So here I will call that push one to um, one five, for example, like this. Uh, what I want to do, you guessed it here. I want to check that it's actually one. So when I press the, my button, it's, uh, yeah, it's activating. And here, first clip, so layer one. Yeah, great, level clip. First clip, last clip, one, two, five in a loop. And now with only one button, I can actually cycle through all the five clips. So very handy, especially because Resolume doesn't have that uh, by default. Uh, you can even do random. So now it's like uh, going in random. Yeah. So yeah, nice. Some I added some things that are not exactly uh, uh, that has that have a, a bit more logic than the actual OSC command that is uh, used. So because it's the same as launch clip, but this one has like internal thing. Drag and drop module to actions. Yes, it's been there for a long time actually. I just always forget that <laughs> um, but yes you can do you can do that 
Uh, yes, okay, that's states. Then states can get a bit more complex because you can actually create transition to states, uh, which are actually actions that transfer the activeness of them because when you have uh, uh, what I call a state network, so two states, for example, linked by anything, even if there is nothing, like the dashed here means that it's not active, it will never get triggered by itself. But because they are linked, basically, if I activate this one, this one will get deactivated which is very good, for example, or for an escape game or uh, a show. Uh, in a show, you have different acts and you have different rules, like you want at some point maybe a dancer to, to trigger some sound and at some point you want something else to happen, then you can have those and you don't really care about uh, when where, where you are because if they are connected to a network, to the same network, then activate one will automatically deactivate the other one. So it's like uh, an, uh, yeah, um, a state <laughs> uh, that, yeah unique states but this one is completely not connected to the other one so if i activate that it's completely independent i can have those one running at the same time so it could be kind of a master and then this would be the more like uh, yeah chronologic way or even not chronologic but at least uh, yeah and i can put some uh yeah sequential activation for example but because it's a state machine you can actually uh so sorry right click create transition from here and i can just do things and it can go in a lot of ways i can add another one that goes here and basically you can see here now that it can get complex and you can have like kind of a game or things like this yeah uh, it's just uh, yeah it, it, you, you 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 can just create your own rules of how it will work and a game is basically that like state machines are used uh, for a, a lot of things um, when it comes to, to, to logic uh, programming. You have some other options that I will not go over, but basically, yeah, that's it. Okay, great. Then, what do, you, do we have? Wow. The time machine, yes, because some people don't uh, want interaction in their life. Sad, sad, sad. But, fortunately for them, there are other things to do. Just do that because it's, yeah. Um, here, so let's say I don't want to sing, I don't want uh, my phone, I don't, I just want something with maybe music that will be triggered in time, uh, launching some lights, launching some videos just in time and animating through that, uh, or it could be pretty much anything. I will create a sequence in the sequence panel. As soon as uh, I uh, created it, it becomes blue because it's the one being edited. Here I can have a lot of different seconds and the blue one is already the, always the one editing. What I see here is an improved version of the UI, which is still a bit uh, yeah, sober, but at least uh, it's beautiful now. <laughs> um, here you get the time, you can scroll through the time, you can see here the indicator of the time. So here, actually, a lot of people don't know what I'm uh, gonna say about uh, manipulating the timeline, so yeah. This is also where uh, you, you already existing, like uh, used, uh, I don't know how to say that, users, ex existing users will also find a lot of nice things to do. Here is the total time. Remember, if you don't know, you can just wait a bit on it and it will sell. So I can change this or also the, like this, or I can just go like this. If I put 20, it will be 20 seconds. If I put one, and uh, this it would be one minute, basically. Uh, yeah, and this is the number of frames, depending because now it's full frame time. It's a, yeah, it's a full frame synchronized. synchronized. So now it's depending on this uh, FPS that is inside the sequence. So when I click on the sequence, I can actually check the play speed, the loop that is also here now. You, can the, you get the loop here. You can see that it activates this one. Um, play speed, if you want to play it faster, why not? Uh, total time, current time, yeah, everything here uh, is the same. So, uh, frames here basically are uh, another way of dealing with that. And when you when you are using uh, like using this for video, or sometimes it can be handy, so you can also control it through frames. So ten frames will be uh, one fifth of second at fifty fps. And actually. When you zoom in, so zoom in here, you, you get this bar that is uh, 
like borrowed from Ableton Live in the navigation system, uh, like both Live and uh, Adobe Audition. Uh, so this timeline, if I click on it and I go uh, down, it will zoom. And now it's infinite zoom. I fixed this problem that it was, uh, yeah, you could not like zoom too much because uh, the mouse would go like on the bottom. And if I zoom completely, you can see those separations here, pre pretty Adobe effect uh, style. So actually, if I put uh, 10 FPS, for example, actually it's not updating by itself. Yeah, now you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten steps. And when I go with my, when I change my time here, you see that it's not going in between because it's um, snapping on the frame. It's it can't be out of the frame basically, uh, the time. So it's it's quite nice now because it's uh, it's more. Yeah, it's more compliant with a lot of different softwares and so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's better, basically. Um, so yeah, I can change uh, like this. I can go up and down to zoom, left and right to uh, to seek. That's great. I can also say, okay, I want to see only the first half of my uh, uh, thing. Ah, I want to reset, important. I can actually right click on this anywhere here and it will reset to full mode. But I can also right click and drag and you see this blue thing, pretty much like the other one, but this one I'm controlling. And I say, okay, I want actually to, 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 to check this part. I would just do this. And now I'm seeing the half, half of the sequence. Or I can do it here as well. Like I want to exactly edit between 10 and 15 seconds and I will right click and drag and I get the same UI, but in this. And then I am actually between exactly 10, um, 10 and 15 seconds now. So this one is really, really handy because this sometimes can feel a bit, um, especially if you have a lot of content, it can be a feel like a bit hard to exactly want to do what you want. But if you know that the part that is interesting is there, you just do this, it's good, you go back. So yeah, it's a new system, but really great to, really great. Uh, I'm happy with it, I will say. What can we do in sequences <laughs> except for navigating in it? We can play them <laughs> and we can stop them and we can, oh, it doesn't do anything. Why? Because it's jumped to the next queue, but we don't have queues. How do we do queues? Double click, double click, double click, or go anywhere and control B, boom. And then you get this nice queue. And now I can actually go from one queue to another, to, to other. <laughs> and apparently, Apparently there is a problem. Oh yeah, I know the problem. Queues <laughs> uh, are not, yeah. Okay, so there is a problem with jumping queues on the 1.7, almost. I think it's just, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it should be able to, to, to do that. So you can jump to the two queues or you can just go to queues uh, through comments. Um, yeah. Layers because obviously otherwise it doesn't really, uh, it's not really useful, right? Trigger, trigger is uh, the same as action, but it will be more for, um, it will be in time. You don't have any condition, you just have the time. So time, trigger, trigger, double click or right click at trigger like this. And one trigger has only consequences and no conditions. So now I can go to here and uh, maybe do this, launch stop, launch clip, clip one here, and this, resolume, launch clip two. And I will just delete those ones. Oh, sorry, control Z, yeah, it works. Uh, vertical is just for uh, ordering them, like for sorting them out, uh, right? Uh, this will be four and this will be three, for example. So I'm on resolume still, I'm playing now, space bar to play or here. Right, same, so I can just press spacebar. Boom, first clip. I would just move that a bit because I'm impatient. And zoom a bit, great, three and four. And while it's playing, you can just do this and stop composition, missed it. Stop composition, and now here we stop the composition. Perfect, so we have our, um, 
are uh, yeah sequential triggers, time triggers, and sometimes I just want to scroll over that. Also, a, a shortcut that no, not a lot of people know. So uh, there are those triggers, and if I go by mouse like this, uh, just by hand, it will not trigger them because it's not playing. But if I uh, keep control, um, if I get control, oh, this is a good one because it's collapsing with another. Ah, oh, yeah, it's conflicting with another uh, <laughs> shortcut. So this one doesn't work anymore. It's okay. It's not really important. Um, what I have added in the new version in is this the set mini mode here. Uh, so before you would like need to do some stuff like this. Now you can just like have this and it will automatically go through this mini mode that can be really convenient if you have a lot of things because then you, you find again your good like height basically. Um, and it, it would not be editable right, right now, it's editable, but it will not be editable anymore. Um, okay, th that is triggers. Then mappings, mappings are the same as mapping here, but it's Again, it's controlled through the time, so you don't get any input. You just get outputs, and your input could move your video, please. Oh, yes, obviously. Hop. Uh, I'll do this here. Uh, sorry. Yes. Oh, no, not that. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so mapping here. Are uh, are what you can you can uh, draw curves and this will be basically your input. So instead of having like the voice uh, the volume of my voice, you will get, for example, uh, a curve. So now I get this curve. What can this curve do? Basically anything that I want it to do. Uh, uh, up output resume and. Again, it's a mapping, so it's continuous. So maybe video parameter, and I will just choose the same like rotation, maybe Y, uh, X this time. So I'm going here. And now I see that it's tied to this rotation. I will just re reset the rotation on uh, up, great. So now this is a rotation that is going along with the curve. And as I go through it, you can see that so this works even with, uh, without, um, sorry, without um, hmm, uh, playing because the values change all the time. So this is good. Maybe I want something more smooth. I will right click here and Bezier, or I can control click on it as well. And it will do the same. I, I, I can do the same for all. So control, control, good. And then here I can. So yeah, this UI has been done again. So, so now it's way more efficient to actually go and select them. And yeah. Um, so now I can have this. And if I play, you can see that is super smooth. Just like we like it. Great. Actually, this now is only uh, controlling uh, the layer one, clip one. So I want that to control the layer one all together. So now when I do this, it will actually control all the layers. So layer one here and then layer two, but it's still controlling this uh, rotation through the layers, uh, through the clips because it's only layers. And I can change that live. Like, okay, this is where I want it to be. Perfect. New version actually comes with something super handy. You can change the range, uh, range already here. So if I, uh, if here I put two, for example, then now you can see that I can go up to value two, which is not existing, like which is not interesting for here because the value is clipped at one, because this is what result expect. But basically, if you have some custom range, then you can already animate like this, and you can even have free range, basically no limitation. And then you can, with Alt and drag, you can actually move like this. And Alt, Shift, drag, you can zoom uh, in the curve and, and basically, yeah, add exactly what you want, exactly where you want. If I want also a point, I would just reput my range, 0 to 1 here. Um, if you want uh, this point to be exactly 0 0.25, you just click on it. And here, I want actually this to be at 
10 and I want that to be at 0 0.25, poof. So now at 10 seconds, it will be exactly one quarter, right? Exactly. So here I see that one quarter equals to like nothing, basically. If I go to 10, yeah, it's basically exactly horizontal. So this is how I can, um, I can control exactly how I want the curve and the range will, uh, will allow you to put exactly the numbers you want. This is mainly why I did it. Um, great, uh, range remap mode is, uh, yeah, it just allows you to keep uh, the relative or absolute values depending on what you want to do. Then we will go to color. Color is colors. So what I want to do with that, maybe, okay, let's just, uh, here, all of that and I will put some source and maybe a linescape here because I like linescapes um, this now I don't want to, this to control the rota rotation but maybe I want to control a source effect because the linescape is a source or so source parameter and the effect is called linescape and uh, the parameter will be maybe um, something like height right and I will reset in the rotation here. I will reset. Great. Rotation. Perfect. So I have here, and when I do that, I see that my height is changing. So maybe I will do this. So I can see good. I will remove my trigger because I don't need it actually. Yeah, I can also just dis disable it here and it would just not be active. So that's good, and we'll go back to zero. Ooh, super. Actually, I want that a bit faster, so I will do this. And yeah. I can also take select more like this and move them together. Hop. Or I can, with shift, I will keep the height, and with alt, I actually can. Um, uh, Oh, that's weird. Oh no, yeah, like this, Alt Shift, and I can actually, uh, yeah, stretch them like this. So not the same system as a uh, 1.6, but it's not lost. <laughs> you just click Alt when doing it like this. Okay. Um, so now I have this, it goes to this up. When maintaining, sh maintaining shift here, you get this nice uh, is in out. Otherwise, you can just like do this. The new version links the the handles together. So when I when I change one side, it would change the other side as well. Um, and now the color layer. So color layer, I have this, this, and I want maybe another one here, red. For example, okay, and the other one are just like outside of the curve. I don't care. What do I want here? Same resolume effect, maybe source parameter, clip one layer one, and it's actually a color that I want to change. It's my it's linescape color because I here I have the linescape color. So here now, if I do this, I can actually already see that it's going from green to yellow to slow to red, right? And I can just go over that and it will change at the same time. So yeah, you can control colors like this. It will just send a color message through SC. You can add audio. Uh, let's take some music here. Uh, for example, this one. And I will reput this now. I will put my audio. You can just uh, move them like this. You can just take them and move them wherever you want. We order them basically, uh, and I will go here. And I want maybe my stop composition. This is my stop. So my stop, I will duplicate it, put it here. So I have a stop in the end, in the, in the start, and well, I put harm here. Not good. And you don't hear anything, uh, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, so if I do this, maybe, yeah, I don't care, speakers. Oh, 
still not. What is uh, hmm. uh, just checking here if I do this. So you don't get the audio. Stop audio. Okay, so I don't know why I didn't check before. I guess you don't get the, you, you don't get the audio. But basically what you can see is that here you get the audio waveform and you can just like have things synchronized to exactly where you want in audio. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe because of that or is it? And yeah, okay. Not sure. Yeah, you can tell me if you see if you hear the audio or not. Right now, I'm pretty sure you don't. But um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, audio layer. It's not really uh, that. Uh, so when when I actually imported it, it uh, automatically uh, put the whole timeline to the time of the thing because it was longer than the time. But I can actually cut it like this. I can cut also a bit of the start if I want. And I can move that anywhere I want. And I can actually have another music just after if I want, like this. And uh, yeah, and now I get this kind of things. Um, there is no fading, smoothing. It's really basic, but basically now you can do that. Um, just so you know, if I, uh, yeah, if, if it works because here I have a sound card, my sound card module here. If not, it will ask you to uh, use a um, sound card module to, to create a sound card module to actually output sound because it's sound, it's output. So it needs a module because everything goes through input and output. Okay, great. Uh, I think th th these are the two really more, uh, like uh, the, the two more most important concepts, state machine, time machine. I will just go now just through this new one, the curve 2D mapper um oh actually actually before that i will go back to my mapping here and just a new thing that has been uh, done in the um 1.7 is drawing so this is nice i can put uh, some uh, like uh, some points and i can image them nice but most of the time for me i like to like do and basically it creates this awesome time for me. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of point actually. It should not be so much, but that can be changed. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it's a lot of points. Maybe it will change over, over course. I'm trying to find the good. We are trying this. This is also thanks to Tom Manier who really greatly improved this. But basically you get like a rough, uh, like you, you, you get a pretty close, pretty close to the shape you had like this and uh, you can still edit it because it tries to, to create this uh, Bezier curve out of what you drew. Um, uh, pas de problème Dupont, Le Grand Dupont. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, you, can draw, uh, you can draw, yay, nice. Um, one other thing that you can do on the mapping is record. So here, when I select my mapping, I have filters as well. I can do whatever I want uh, the same. And in recorder here, I can um, select a value. For example, my, in my phone, I can have my fader. So this one. Also here, let's say I want my fader too, but I don't want to, to, to actually, uh, um, how to say, um, I don't want to, 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 to get it in, the, in here because there are too many variables. I can click learn. And now when I change to fader, uh, when I move here on my, on my phone, it will automatically select. Um, so, so now I have this value and I can actually, I hope it will not crash, arm here, right? Actually, I will also put auto disarm in, in here. But basically now I have, I have my arm here. This becomes red just for this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This becomes red just for this layer. And now when I play, you see that it's actually um, checking 
um, sorry, hop. It's checking the like recording basically what I'm doing on the phone. So slowly going back. And as soon as I stop, it will replace whatever was before for that. So now if I go a bit more, it's exactly what I recorded, but in a editable way. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is, this is really good because you can like record pretty much anything because it's the same as the values in your module. You can record anything from that. Um, okay, and off now to the new mapping layer. I would just do a new one because this one is a bit, yeah. Mapping 2D. How do you get mapping 2D? Wow, crazy. Mapping 2D here. Uh, so the, the, there are three curves basically. Uh, no, there are two curves. One is a path. So I can actually click like this and create a path. And the same, I can uh, like start moving them basically and having these nice uh, curves. By the way, same for uh, two D, like for for one D and two D curves. If I click, uh, if I hold Alt, uh, the Alt touch, uh, I can then edit them separately, either the curve or the handle. But if I don't, then they will. It will always try to find the best way to have everything smooth, smooth. Great. This should definitely not be here, but that's okay. And what you can already see here is the X and Y, X and red, uh, Y in green, uh, X and Y value that are doing this. And this curve is a progression on the path in time. So basically I get zero here, which is a starting point, which is this green dot here. And here one will be the yellow end point. So now if I go over, you can see that it's just going through it. And these are the values that you see here, which, are the, which is the result. Uh, basically, if I do this actually, hop. Uh, if I minimod, I, only, I will only see, uh, see the values here. Same as the mapping. This is something that I didn't show, but here we have the value. Uh, oh, let me draw something, great. So you can see the value changing here. And if I do this, now you only get uh, the value shown and this is not editable. So it's very handy when you have a lot of mappings. You can still see the curve, but at the same time, um, and, and see the output here, but yeah. Um, so 2D mapping, basically the same, but now you get two variables to, to, to send to whatever you want, whether it's a, a point uh, for uh, drawing stuff or uh, I don't know, a uh, moving head uh, in light, for example, or a sound that would be specialized. Uh, so yeah, you can animate point in 2D and send that because basically you have this output here that you can still use for whatever you want. Great. So yeah, this is 2D. Uh, it's still in construction. The, the UI is not really great. Uh, by the way, here, uh, when you want to to like all those things with squares, with a like checkerboard on the background uh, are views and views you can um, uh, how to say, navigate through them either with middle button mouse, if you have a mouse or alt click and drag uh, if you don't have a mouse, if you have a, yeah. And you can also go with uh, the touchpad and do that uh, and like slide both directions and it should work. And if you want to zoom and unzoom, it's shift, shift and uh, scroll or shift and mouse wheel. And you can have this zoom. It's limited right now just to avoid weird behaviors. But if you feel like it's not a good thing, then I can definitely change it. So here I can actually go here and it's an infinite, uh, this one, yeah, it's, it's infinite. So you can go crazy and same, you can just draw. So I can just do shift and uh, control shift and draw. So th this is control shift, right? And you just draw and basically it's drawing. So <laughs> now you have that. Uh, great. And here actually I can change the path. So if I want to do a back and forth, for example, let's say I would put that here and then I put that and you can see already that it's just mirroring the X and Y here. And actually what I can do even is Put that in Bezier because it's a curve. I do whatever I want. Bezier, Bezier, and now I get this nice stuff. I actually only want that in uh, something like 
8 seconds. So let's put 8 like this. So this is also holding shift and here I will go 8 seconds and I will loop this and now I get this nice animation. And it goes back and there is a nice smooth in the end. And it goes back and that is a loop. And I can watch that infinitely. Great. Okay, those are 2D mappings. And yes, there will be 3D mapping at some point, but it needs a 3D engine for that. <laughs> so not yet. Um, but yeah, I think I've thought about it. And yes, uh, oh, you can hear somebody. Oh yeah, great. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the new stuff. Uh, I will not go really over that because it's quite complex uh, to go uh, with the key sync and stuff, but uh, it, it can do already a lot. It's just, it needs some maybe polishing and yeah, some trying out and figuring what are the best ways to use it uh, or improve it. Okay, that's it for the time machine. Don't hesitate if you have questions, if you have uh, like things uh, to, to, to ask, and ask them now or also and I will uh, either uh, answer them now or in the Q&A in the end. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not at all. Custom variables, I think I will go with model rotor before. <laughs> I will cheat my own pre uh, my own rule. So model rotor, rotor. Okay, new, Pfft. I told you about that before. Um, and this is, something, let's say I have something like uh, Wiimote or Kinect. Kinect is more common, right? So Kinect, I get uh, I get those things like 6% detected because it's the max that a Kinect can, can, can detect. And I get some parameters. So these are only values. I don't even have any parameters or anything for, for the Kinect right now. So just the number of person detected and uh, the, ident the IDs uh, of them. And yes, um, what's... Uh, yeah, the positions basically, because it's a Kinect, so you can detect that. And here I can go to my model rotor. So what I want is to send everything that the Kinect uh, receives. And I don't want to create mappings, like I don't want to create uh, 60 mappings, it doesn't make sense. So I will ditch my state machine and go to the model rotor and I create one rotor. I can create a, a, as many as I want. And here I will for the source module, I will create, check the Kinect v2. This is very weirdly presented, but well, oh, I understand why now. <laughs> okay, I didn't check that. Anyway, this is fun. Uh, this should not be like this, but it's still <laughs> showing all the information. This is like some UI that I didn't check when on the new version. Uh, the 1.7.0 will be quickly updated with a lot of things that I didn't see. Uh, I, we just check with uh, some people that I thank a lot, Toma, uh, Tom, Tom Manier, David uh, as well, and Manuel uh, helped me a lot uh, figuring out some bugs um, before releasing the 1.7. Um, so out module, I have OSC here, so I can already do this. And basically what I, can, what I see here is uh, OSC. So I just have to edit these, those OSCs are already pre-filled with some things that make sense from what were from the, the name of the parameters and the module so it's like module uh, container and parameter here um, and here if i had a connect with me and i would uh, move then it would already send all of that and then i can just easily maybe uh, oh there is no more uh, those uh, okay it's really ui came okay I have a big guy. You, you should have some buttons here. <laughs> um, anyway, here uh, you can easily deselect and select whatever you want. Um, so those ones will not be will not be taken in account, right? Okay. Uh, and I can have another one. Maybe I want to send also on DMX, for example. So why not uh, put some DMX here? and still my Kinect 2, but here also DMX. Great, oh, so they are here, so I know why they are not here, but so here maybe I only want to have the left hand sent to DMX, why not, right? And I can auto set channels here, 
so you see that it will automatically uh, it will automatically lay out all the channels in a fashion fashionly way I've been asked to do that as well so it's easy to send a lot of different channels and I will uh, continue doing that to other uh, modules like the MIDI for example to stay to, to send pitch different pitch or control uh, control change easily so like I will be adding more of those control to automatically set stuff because when you're using the model rotor <coughs> most of the time it's because you want uh, to have batch uh, yeah to have a lot of variables that, that the variables that you send so it's cool to have like nice buttons to auto set or like automate some behaviors uh, or to make some configuration so now there's this auto set channel uh, so as I said maybe I only want the left and right hand and now I get all only those channels sending uh, and it will convert this range whatever this is to 0 to 255 because the full range here is done so this is documented as well um, Okay, great. So model rotor, not a lot to say except that it will allow you to really transfer very quickly some uh, different, uh, some protocols that you will receive, some different things to other things really fast. Um, if you want to do OSC to OSC, for example, you, you receive OSC and you want to route it to two different other modules, but entire, like leaving uh, the, the, the message is intact. You shouldn't use a, a model rotor because a model rotor will reinterpret the data. So you may lose some stuff. Instead, if I have my OSC, uh, input for example here or let's say I have my phone input um, hop, like this uh, so my phone input I will uh, just have input for example and I will have another OSC that were so here I get some warning because it couldn't bind the port and this is what an error look like on the logger right uh, but it's okay because I will actually um, remove this um, and so I don't get any warning because now the OSC input is uh, disabled, so no problem. And I don't only see output because this is my, let's see, uh, uh, to soft one, right? Uh, OSC to soft one, and maybe I duplicate it and OSC to soft two. So I have two things and I want my phone input to send straight to those ones. What I can use is a path through here Sorry, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, mixed, but it's okay. And then pass through and I can select either my, my own or OSC to soft one here and OSC to soft two. And now what happens is that whenever something is going into my, uh, into here, it will go here at the same time. So everything that is sent, even if it's not, uh, if even there is no auto add, like it's not even going through the engine of Shatten. It's just taking the thing Go checking all the outputs in the pass through and going and this is why also you can't get you can only get um, here uh, OSC because uh, if I ch check here I only get the OSC module even if I added a MIDI module here you don't get it here because it's a pass through so it needs to be the same type of module but that's the most efficient that you will get uh, it stays in the thread it's just like straight in and out great uh, Okay, I'm gaining people now, being with you. Maybe they waited for something interesting to happen. I don't know. Uh, custom variables. Yay! Custom variables. This is kind of a big thing. I will go, not go also too deep into it. I will just show you. Don't feel overwhelmed by that. Sometimes you want something, let's say, uh, a game logic, and you want to keep uh, track of a score for example. So let's say I have this OSC here. And so I have a button here, push one that is goes to, goes to one. Quick thing as well here, it's a, it's a, it's a float because a touch OSC only sends floats, but actually I want, a, I want a button, I want a Boolean. I can actually delete it here and create manually a boolean that I will call slash one slash push one. Uh, actually it's slash two slash push one. Poof. And I created this boolean because it has the same address. Now it will work the same, but it's it's looking like a, like a boolean. It's make, making more sense for me because it's actually exactly what I want uh, for this, right? Um, oh, you ha I had the video the whole time right here, shit. 
sorry. Oof. I tend to forget these kind of things. I hope it was okay for the moderator. I can show you quickly if you want. Uh, yeah, just tell, tell me in the comments if you want to, to check that again or not. Um, okay, what I was about to say. Oh yeah, yeah, OSC. So I want to, to basically have a, a, a game Whenever I play, I type this button, uh, I will have a score. I will increment my score. And uh, when I go to, yeah, let's just do that because it can be a bit more, but yeah, let's just do that. So I will create a group of custom variables. So a, a group can be um, a lot of different variables. And here I will have an eat parameter, integer parameter, right? It, it's a score. I will call score and this is will be my game logic for example. Hmm. Game logic, perfect. And I will write my score here. Okay, I will even do something with my max score here. That will put to 10 already because I want that to win the game at 10. So I have my variables, basically it's my settings and also my um, track of like my memory, what I call my memory. So what can I, I can do, I will do it quickly. I add a state, I add an action. In this action, I will do create, check that push one is done. So I get this, great, this is working. And in true here, I can do custom variable set value. And I will be able to, so in, when, when I select a, a command, basically, I have here below that all my special ones. Custom variable is one of them, set value and set value game logic score and here i can do add one so what it will do it adds one all the time so if i go to my make it, um, game logic here and i push here you can see that it's just going every time i push boom 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 boom, boom. great i want so you see here push equal score plus and i will create another one to do custom variable and I, what I want to check is that uh, this is not okay score that's not good score hmm. okay score equals 10 this, this is my max score right so I will show you how, after how you can actually do that even better um, and here, OS, uh, I will do something uh, like you win. Yeah. So basically, generic. In the generic here, I can log a message. And log a message will allow me to you win. If I want to test just this, just to check that it works, I can do here on the trigger. And you can already see that the logger will show me you win exactly what I want. You can clear that. Great. Is it possible to link the score to an OSC argument? Uh, in what sense do you want to send or to um, the max score, the score? What do you want to 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 to, to do? But I'm pretty sure yes. But yeah, I, I need more information there. Okay, so I say you win, and I want to result the score at the same time. So custom variable set value here game logic score equals zero. So I set to it to zero. To send the score, yes, for example, for, for sure. Here, I have first I add the score, and then I could totally have maybe on another OSC, for example, here uh, I don't know somewhere uh, to visuals, for for example. Okay, I will call it to visuals, and then in my score plus, I add another one to visuals custom message, and here I will call it score, and I will put int here. And what I can do with that, what I wanted to do here actually, uh, in game, I will uh, so I will do it in a uh, in, in a few seconds. Uh, just I, I will do it again after. Just uh, this win game. What I want now, so it, it it goes to zero. And what I want to check is actually more or actually yeah, I will just put it to zero here manually. And now every time I, uh, oh, no, I just yeah zero on the score and now every time i go so i push my button and yeah basically you win and it went to zero back and i can just start again my, my 
thing. So this is kind of a, yeah more complex logic that you can get out of this kind of uh, uh, out of the the custom variables. You can also do a lot of other things like. Um, uh, you can create presets and you can uh, re record those presets. You can animate them. So a lot of things there to 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 yeah to discover. I don't want this to 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 be too long. It's already been two hours. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, C custom variables will let you like create basically your own variables, your own data, uh, independent of the modules. Uh, what I want here is that this core I actually want it to be linked to. Um, this max core here, right? So, uh, so what I want to do here is like right click on the parameter, on this parameter, control mode, reference. And now what I can do, okay, this is really ugly, but it will go away as well. Um, it, here I can do this and now choose custom variables, game logic, variables, max core, max core. So I'm going by hand, checking this uh, parameter. And now if I change this one, if I want to that the game is finished at 15, now 15, and it will also be here 15 because it's linked to this one, which makes it very handy because if I have a lot of parameters and I only have this to check it, and if I, <clears throat> I, I want to check the score, if I want to show the score somewhere else, like if I'm using it in a lot of places, then it's only one place to edit and you don't risk to, to, to do it, um, yeah, to, to, to mistake. So always have as less thing as, uh, as possible to modify if you want. If there is only one data to modify, you should only modify it once, basically. And then if I want to modify, to, to check the score, yes, I can create a mapping. And because the custom variable is so special module, I can actually go to my game logic and here, uh my score and this score i can go to custom message here and uh i, don't know, I want two visuals custom message slash score and i will do an int parameter that is already used for mapping here linked to this this is how you use in uh, custom uh, custom messages you can you just check this use for mapping and it will take the input and go straight to the output. If you got more, then uh, you can have different use for mapping here. Um, yes. And just to check, I will go to two visuals and I log out going to check the data that is going out. So now if I do this, basically you can see in the logger that it sends OSC. So from my two visuals module, send OSC, and you can see that it's uh, sending the score up to 14 and then on 15 i win actually it sends also the 15 and then you win and it sends zero back again so you have your full logic here sending already things and stuff and you can you can do pretty much yeah you can even do a level two if you want like this and then you could have a level and on your max score here and you win you could up the level and if the level is more then it will it will go to the next state and you would have level one here, level two here, and it would maybe uh, be another game then. So yeah, I guess, I hope you can see how this can be quite powerful, also can get a bit complex, but for simple interaction, it's really efficient in this way. Um, I will show you something uh, a, a bit, uh, yeah, a bit uh, different, <laughs> uh, actually, yeah. No, let, let's stay on the custom variable for, 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 for a while, just uh, custom variables. I can create preset. I, I, will, I will have another one that will I, I will call, for example, uh, particles. And let's say that it's just presets for particles, uh, for a, a, yeah, a simulator or something, or, or even for resume. Then I can have maybe a parameter and I will set his range so right click set range zero to one for example and i will call that particle size and another parameter that is a color parameter and particle color great so now i have two parameters right um, and i can just change them manually and i could maybe use that in a moderator custom variables and then two visuals both and then i already get all my um, yeah, that I should also take care of. But basically, I, I would take care of, I would get my score. It's So basically, the, the custom variables is getting all the data here. 
but you could easily just do that and then have this one send particle size and particle color here. Um, great. And then in my hmm, here, I can I could have presets, and so in my preset, I will have uh, maybe I want this. Uh, so like a, let's say a, yeah small red and big blue. So this would be my two two different uh, big uh, yeah big purple like this. No big green. Okay great. I have one preset small red and my preset here big green. So those are two two presets. Okay let's do a medium blue. Perfect. So I have my, um, sorry, I'm a maniac, like this. So I have my three presets here, small red, big green, medium blue, great. Uh, what I could want is, uh, because this would be sent, uh, this will be sent always when it's changing, as soon as it's changing, you can see already here, because this has a logout going that it's already changing that. So this I could actually change and say particle size and this uh, particle color. And this will just send those uh, different things. If I change it here, you can see the color is changed as well. I will just remove that to avoid too much complication. What I can do now with my state machine is that I could just create an action just, just to test. And in my consequence, I will go to custom variable go to preset here. So you, you can see that there are a lot of different ones, right? Um, but go to preset here will allow you to go to whatever you want. And this is the time you take to do it. And this is the curve of animation. So it's already pre-made pre, pre to have like some easy in out. And if I do this and I go here, you can see that now it's, so I will put, put a bit more time so you can see during the change, like 10 seconds and or five seconds and when i trigger actually th this will be too red here and this is too green and this is too blue right and too blue will go to medium blue to green will go to big green i did i duplicated all of this i can also this trigger button is the same as this one so i can just like create empty actions and just use them as triggers basically and if I here to green, to red in five seconds, it will go slowly to this one and to blue whoosh, will go slowly to this one. Nice. What we added, thanks to Manuel to give me the feedbacks of that and like testing it as well a bit, uh, is the interpolate. So now you can also choose for every parameter in every preset, you can choose how it should behave when interpolating. So. Most of the time you will want maybe to have everything interpolate, but maybe sometimes you want uh, something to happen already at first or already at end. So keep start will keep the start value until it, it finishes the interpolation. And when it finishes, it will uh, set this parameter and keep end as well. So it's, it's good for some other type of parameters, but also for those ones, maybe sometimes you just want to change the way it's animating and here you can choose. So if it's interpolate, it will follow uh, these curves. But if not, then it will just keep it and at the end or already when it's keep end, it will just start, uh, it will uh, set it as soon as the go to preset has been triggered. So this is a new thing from the uh, 1.7 as well. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, that is quite interesting. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's good for custom variables. I won't go with the morpher, but I will just show you so you are a bit uh, afraid of these. Uh, where are they actually? Yeah, here. Uh, so basically those are, uh, so let's put green, green, there's a red, let's put it red, it will make sense and medium blue will be blue, right? So basically this is allowing to have a 2D, so when I put my control mode to Voronoi, suddenly those presets here have colors that you can set to, to see it more here. And basically you can have this, uh, if I debug, you can see that it's always, um, um, how do you pondering, uh, like waiting 
uh, weigh, weighing the, the thing. So now they have weights here and you can actually influence and basically it will be a mix of all of that following a Voronoi pattern. So if I create a new preset here, uh, that will be uh, this one, I put a, a yellow this time, hop, like this. So I have my yellow, I will call it yellow. Now yellow and now yeah I have that here and now it's uh, it's going to yellow blue if I go here green but it's always mixing everything and depending on how you put them or obviously it's just it changes some stuff there is a lot more because you can actually use attraction there is like physics and stuff you can create very very organic behaviors with that but yeah it's uh, it's pretty fun to use um, and this is a morpher Great, no crash rate uh, up until now, it's, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> One thing that a lot of people have been waiting as well is dashboard. Uh, can I do this? So moderator, we've done dashboard. Yeah, dashboard and custom variable have done, right? So dashboard. Dashboard was already existing, but has changed a bit. Now you have this frame that you can change here. So let's say you can set a resolution basically, which makes it, uh, actually I will leave uh, this, for example, uh, yeah, like this. And this is basically the frame where you can like put things. You can actually put them everywhere you want, but like this is kind of a, a canvas helper. And what you can do with that is basically take any parameter and put them here. So if I want, for example, I have a sequence and I want this time, uh, I, went, I, I just click, right click, send to dashboard, dashboard, and I get this visualization of my time sequence that I can put here. And I can also have this is playing, for example, uh, send to dashboard, or I can, if it's in the, from the inspector, I can actually just drag and drop it, hop. And why not have uh, as well a toggle play? So I get, oh. So yeah, you, you saw also that it got, deleted and Control-Z will reling them. If I create my seconds, I have this toggle play here that I like, so I will just put toggle play and I I will change the text for uh, my sequence. My sequence. So now this is my sequence and I will play it play when I don't play it. Don't, um, when I click again, it doesn't click. So, oh, sorry. Yes, I forgot again. Up. I will redo it then and cut it in editing. So here, dashboard. So I will just put my dashboard. Oh, actually, I can I can leave it here. I will create a new dashboard here. It's in edit mode, so I can create things. I have my sequence here, and I can just take this time here. Right click, send to dashboard, dashboard. Poof. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nebulo. Uh, I'm sorry. I. Uh, I realized that a bit too late. Um, here I have uh, my uh, my time then, and I can have also uh, maybe uh, my toggle play or is playing here. Let's have this up. And I can also drag and drop. So toggle play, I just drag and drop and I have this toggle play now, but I don't know what it is for. So here I will call it uh, launch sequence or toggle sequence. And this is, yeah. And now if I if I do this, actually it should not, but if I now go in uh, out of edit mode now, actually I can I can actually uh, use those um, yeah those uh, those uh, this UI in, in here. I can check a lot of things. I can check maybe some OSC values. I got this uh, push here, or my game logic. I want my score, so I would just. Do this, oh, sorry, and send to dashboard. Score, and now the score is, I need to put back in edit mode and I can just put it here, up, and now I have my score. So whenever I, I actually hop, I will go here, I don't know why it's like this. And now whenever I push, I also see my score here, which can be handy. Um, so yeah, the UI is not really great exactly, but it's, it's cool enough, I would say. 
And now, so, so you, you can create as many dashboards as you want and you can already like put something that is way simpler than, uh, um, than the, the rest of the, of the UI. So if you are giving to someone, maybe you just you can just do that. But even better now, if I go to my file and so there is project settings and preferences, right? Which I, I encourage you to see. Yeah, there are a lot of different things. So just start, you can do a lot of things. The auto save because it also save. Please keep enable crash upload and send analytics, uh, even if it's, uh, you can remove analytics, but it just helps me understand a bit how it, the software is used. It's not, it's no critical data. I'm definitely not using them for evil, uh, just to have a sense of uh, how it's done. But in the project settings now, you have this uh, enable dashboard that uh, appears and enable dashboard server We'll create a server on port 9999. And if now I go here and I put 1.079999, I actually get my dashboard in on the web. Yay! Uh, not finished as you can see, but I get my I get my three dashboards and I can just control them the same way. So now I'm controlling my time here. Uh, I can play the sequence. Uh, the score is apparently not working. <laughs> Um, because inte integer are not uh, supported yet here, but uh, yeah, basically it's it's that. So um, you can uh, yeah you can create your own uh, like you can create a server and access it from anywhere. I can even access it from my phone uh, if I put the IP and the and the port. I will access it because it's a web page, so I can access it from anywhere. And this is very uh, interesting also for let's say a Raspberry Pi, and then you can just have uh, yeah, this exposed dashboard. If you don't like the design that I did, it's no problem because you can actually, uh, this is not documented at all, but you can actually get the base file somewhere, uh, no, somewhere here. I don't know on the other system. So I'm chatting here, there is this dashboard and you get some uh, this is actually the server, like this is only that. So uh, if I duplicate it and I go to document, chatting, and I copy that now, and let's say in my style.css, so this is only for people who obviously will know what they are doing, but now let's say I want my background in red, so I would just put this. Uh, now my background should be red. Um, and if uh, if I restart chatting like this, uh, so I restart chatting. Um, somewhere should be, uh, yeah, you, you can also update dashboard files here, uh, for, for the latest online because it's getting it online and I will do some updates, but then you don't need a new version of chatting. You just need that. But basically because there is this, uh, be, be, because in the document chatting dashboard, there is something, there is this folder dashboard, it will over override and use this one. So now if I'm going to files project settings it's per project so i need to activate it uh, all the time uh, but if i if i save a project if i save a file when i reload the file it will activate or deactivate which is really handy because you don't want that to be uh, uh, you want that to be tied to a project basically if you are not using it then it's optimized and it's not using it but it's uh, if, and if you are using it on another computer it will also create the server by on its own this works on both uh, windows mac and linux so enable dashboard server here Great, and then in uh, and then in my uh, sorry in my window here, I will go to my things, and now you can see that the background is red. I don't have anything because the dashboard is not uh, filled. But if I fill with some stuff here, um, let's see, let, like this. Uh, I don't know some yeah, up like this. Uh, I can actually I put that very big. Um, I don't even need to say to save. I just rest, uh, I, I reload the, the page and it's already there and I can already change whatever I want here. Um, it can go really fast, uh, really deep. Like I can have a mapping, some things like this and this point, exactly this point, I want this value here to be on the dashboard. So now I have this value on the dashboard, which is exactly my uh, key value three because of my third value. And now if I do this, 
I can actually see it and I can actually change it from here at the same time. So you can do pretty much whatever you want uh, from the dashboard and controlling because the whole software is controlled the same way. Whatever you see is controllable. You can control the dashboard from the dashboard if you want. Uh, no problem with that. Um, yeah, you can do a, a lot of things. Killer feature. Yes, uh, it's, it's, it's been a long time, uh, kind of long overdue, but at the same time, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot to take on and to be sure that it works. Um, great. Uh, this is a dashboard. Uh, yeah. Feature uh, feedbacks welcome because it's very new. It's very not a lot used, but I'm pretty sure that it can uh, it can become really great uh, in time and be really something that gets uh, shattered in a in a very even more uh, easy to to use and to, to to deliver also to other people because uh, then you can like have any iPad uh, anything that can just go go to go to internet. You put that in kiosk mode and boom, you have thing and because you can design it yourself you can ask anybody to do some styling or even uh, redo the, the whole uh, um, like this is not only styling uh, right this, this, this is a uh, like this is a web page that connects to, to connects to Chatagne and everything you can change whatever you want you can you can uh, do a, a completely diff different web server if you want so so but but because it's also way way easier to to change like some web page uh, web page and some HTML and, and and JavaScript, then you can ask a lot of people, or you can do it by yourself. But um, then you you can really like create your own interface just in HTML and access it from any device. So for for escape rooms again, or for museums, or for you can create yeah you can create your control interface very quick. Uh, Okay, that's uh, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, nine, and still uh, still quite consistent on the viewers. Not a lot, but consistent. I love you. Uh, and for you, then you get the detective. What is a detective? It's a new thing. Uh, okay, let's say I want actually to monitor this value, and I can't. I can't. I can't. Why? Watch. Is a detective. Yeah. Okay. So I want to monitor the value that gets out of this mapping here, uh, or may maybe more. Maybe more. Let's say the value that actually gets in this. So I can I can log right. I'm logging logging here now, and I can just like get that, and I get all the values from fader one and the value from fame dot two. But then if I'm changing them at the same time, it becomes very confusing because I can't really track whatever. So what I can actually do here is right click and watch with this with the detective and it's a detective it will just like take his big lens and start showing exactly what it gets so this is in a three second window this is a, like yeah this is also like really work in progress ui but it's already working like functional and basically i can just um yeah I, 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 can, I can check what, what I'm doing. And then we, if I want to, to, to do another one, watch if it's a detective, it's on, on the bottom. And now I can like have them at the same time. So it's really great to, to, to check, to, to, to follow, for, yeah, follow, follow data, understand what's happening. Um, I can do that with 2D as well. If I have got a mapping 2D here, very quick, I'll do this super weird stuff. I get this and I'm not really understanding what's happening here can just do this and watch with the detective. And now I get actually two D values. So red and green, same. Um, and yeah, um, actually the range, range is not there, it's okay. But yeah, basically you get that. You see that the UI is not exactly made for that because it's like between zero and one. And yeah, so some weird stuff happening. Color you can do as well. So color here, uh, if I go here, watch with the detective and now I can uh, check my green, red, and blue channels, basically. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty handy at the same time. Uh, well, yeah, that's it for the detective. Again, feedbacks welcome because it's a new feature and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things that you would like to see there. Uh, wow. 
I think we've kind of went through almost everything. I think I like a lot of small features, shortcuts and stuff I didn't show you, but I think most of the things then you get how it works, how you can maybe use it, or at least you can go back to this video and, and, and check again. Um, and then, yeah, again, the documentation will, uh, will be updated with a lot of things uh, that have been uh, updated into software. Uh, what do I have on my slide? <laughs> the detective, yes. Scripting. <sighs> scripts. Basically, you can create scripts. I will really not go far there, but every module has a script, and what a script can do is um, crash. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I, I needed to have at least one crash, right? So. I create an OSC module, uh, it, it offers me to create or load one. So I will go to my desktop and I will call that demo, for example. And um, and then I can edit it with this small button, not really uh, comprehensive. Uh, and I just received my mail for the crash because every time your software shut and crashes, if in the preference it's activated, I will receive a mail of this crash. And uh, it helps me a lot. Also, please write some information if you know a bit why or what you were doing when it crashed, it will help me a lot debugging it. Uh, oh, yes, still stuck. Great. Oh, you didn't see the crash. I could have fa faked that. Shit. Okay, I'm too honest. Basically, I'm here, OSC. I will create here a script. I will create a, a new script called demo. So. OSC module, script here, great. And this icon here will open the editor. If most of the time on Windows and I don't know on Mac, but on Windows, it will like throw an error like, yeah, there is no editor. Just just choose a, a default editor for your the JavaScript file and uh, it will be good. And I really encourage you to use, uh, to use either Sublime Text or VS Code. Uh, they are really, really great editors. Um, I love them. And then it's already pre-filled with a lot of things. There is a lot of documentation, but it will allow you to extend a lot the software, uh, creating your own complex uh, interpretation of the data, uh, your own, um, yeah, your, your own, you can create your own comments. You can create more, uh, yeah, more complex logic. Um, so everything is documented inside the script and as well uh, on the, uh, documentation, sorry, for this stuttering uh, docs. And here you have a very thorough scripting reference. So introduction to scripts reference, you have all the functions, everything that should get you going. And in, if not, just ask on Discord, just can ask on the forum and we will be happy to, I will be happy or other people will be happy or maybe at some point you will be happy to answer other people because you will be a master. Uh, so yeah, those are scripts. Scripts can be in a lot of ways. You can actually have them in uh, as condition as well. If you want like super complex condition, you can here create uh, uh, different things. Oh, there are a lot of things that I didn't show there, but yeah, I can't show everything. Um, you can uh, you can have filters script as well here to have complex filters as well uh, and in modules for right and for now it's only there and, uh, yeah actually yeah, you can have script consequence as well generic script scripts are everywhere as are cool it's JavaScript and it's uh, quite yeah if if, if the program it's quite easy to 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 get on it and. Yeah. It needs to do, to understand a bit the, the, the logic of chatting uh, in script, but it's all documented and yeah. Great, and last but not least, thank you. I will put myself smaller for this one because every time I see that, this makes me small. Um, thank you, thank you for viewing this video now. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for following the software. Thank you on all the people here and uh, and many more that are actually helping me a lot with the software. I'm really thinking about Tom um, and Manuel and David who are really 
taking a lot of time to do that. Uh, they are using software and they get some, some stuff out, yes, but they are really helping me a lot and uh, on things that I couldn't do on myself. It's not, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's not a one-man job. It's, uh, I, 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 obviously, I put a lot of effort in it and you are welcome. Thank you uh, uh, again for uh, to my Patreons and to my GitHub sponsors. I feel now like a real YouTuber. Um, and yes, uh, it's not uh, it's not um, a lot of people also doing a lot of uh, single donation that I have not put there. But for me, really like being a sponsor, being a, a donator, if you are using it professionally, or like if you get something out of it and you are happy with it, I'm happy that it's uh, it's free because I want uh, uh, as many people who don't necessarily have money to be able to use it. Um, and uh, and yeah, this is uh, this is my contribution to the open source community and to the art in general. Um, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, obviously, it's taking a lot more time now that other people are using it. I initially uh, made it for me, for myself, and uh, and now it's yeah, it's public. I'm happy with it, but it takes time. And uh, yeah, ju 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 just obviously, as more uh, the, the more. Uh, patrons and the more sponsors I get uh, and the more time I can uh, dedicate to improving the software uh, and not only this one I'm doing a lot of other things and patrons are not patrons only for this software but for the the whole project of me programming basically or me doing things um, and um, I will be doing a, I will be starting a light software soon and I'm also uh, improving, I will be improving uh, organic orchestras uh, um, uh, LGML, the Grand Méchant Loop software, which is an audio software, and creating also some software to control drones and do drone choreography, and Bento, which is a LED control software dedicated to juggling, but not only. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of other tools and chatten uh, that I'm doing, and uh, it's all coming together, more step by step. Um, chatten is one of the most, like, the biggest and uh, the one I'm the most proud of. Uh, I, I want to thank Ant Antoine aussi, uh, for sure. Uh, I don't know if he's here, but Antoine uh, Cost has been uh, in the first development of what was called Artisanum uh, a long time ago for Series Prod. Uh, then I took on uh, other version called Bacon and Châtaigne um, and that I redid by myself. But he's also been here a lot, giving a lot of feedbacks and uh, Obviously, uh, it would not be like that if it was not for those first version that existed back in 2013. <laughs> um, and I put some logos because there are also partners, uh, like moral partners, I would say. It's more, yeah, uh, companies that really uh, were uh, like, ni are nice enough to either give me uh, some licenses or uh, allow me to do things in different ways. Uh, putting me in contact and stuff. So, so, so yeah, those are the companies. Actually, I should be put bit crazy also there. Uh, but yeah, um, like, I, I, I feel like those are the ones that are really like for, uh, yeah, believing me, be believing me and, and also uh, doing what they can to encourage uh, open source initiatives. So, yeah, that's it. Do I have another slide? Yeah, I have. Uh, actually, I think we are quite uh, early on that. Uh, <laughs> the chat has been uh, flowing with love messages, uh, and I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you again. I'm really happy. Uh, this uh, this release is a, a big step for me. I put uh, a lot of Corona time in it, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and also I hope that this video or this uh, workshop, even if it's not like thousands of people watching right now will be also a start of uh, 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 um, pro propagating the software uh, outside of France and uh, Europe because it's been uh, kind of a virus right now. Like I can see the propagation going very from Lyon, from where it was born to, to uh, yeah, to uh, more and more, uh, uh, more and more broad. But uh, yeah, uh, I think it lacked a bit of English material, I hope this is one that will uh, make everybody happy uh, when starting. Uh, when starting, and if you have questions that you, that yeah, that you find interesting either for you or for other pe people, uh, please do. There are ten seconds. There is ten seconds delay on the chat. So what I will do is, 
it is banana and if by the end of the banana I didn't get any question then this will be the end of the stream basically started and I eat quite fast I must say <laughs> we drink some water to give you time it's getting dark here Yay, lights. Uh. Oh, wait, one question. Does the one dot send runs well on Raspberry Pi 4 and will we be able one day to use GPIO? So, great question. Uh, let me check right now. <laughs> um, Actually, I, you can check with me. Hop, I have this Travis. If you want to check, you can actually actually do it as well. It's uh, completely. Uh, if you go actually from the GitHub here, let me check where the GitHub is. In the chat end, GitHub has uh, been doing a new UI today. It's uh, really really nice. Um, on the GitHub, you can see in the badge section, the badge zone. Yeah, Linux, Mac, Windows, Raspberry Pi, build passing. So if I click on Raspberry Pi here, I will uh, be already in this. And here you can check that uh, it's done. So this is actually on the master if you want to check. I don't know. Because I did it today, I actually didn't check. But build this story and I can see like 1.0 with the tag 1.0 here, 7.0 is done. So when I click on it, this one is successful and target target Linux ARM HF here built for the Raspberry. This one is for the Raspberry. It built. So so I would say yes. <laughs> the it runs. Then runs well. I actually don't know because I don't have a Raspberry uh, with me. I don't have a Raspberry Pi 4. I know that chatting runs on Raspberry Pi 4. Pi 4 and I know that uh, is uh, 1.6 runs well. I'm pretty sure that 1.7 should run even better because it, it um, I optimized like a lot of things that you don't see, but I optimized. Also, how mappings are done, for example, to, to try to be even more efficient. Uh, I optimized how the sequence are played, so I hope it's a bit more efficient. Uh, if not, it's, it will not be less. Um, so I would say, please test. Please tr test and, 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 and give feedback uh, to the community if it runs or not. Send videos, send stuff. Um, as for the GPIO, uh, the GPIO is, uh, you can actually already do it through comments because I think on Raspberry Pi, there is a, this command like GPIO number and you can like uh, control it like this. Uh, I don't find it really proper uh, to be honest, but it's still possible if it's like for, not not to not to, to, to do a lot of control, but if it's just for, for relays, for example, you just uh, on off, you can actually use that because in Chatagne you have this, um, OS uh, launch command here so you can actually do like gpio for uh, one and I would I'm pretty sure that this would uh, then uh, like here it, it, uh, it will say uh, I'm trying to launch command because gpio doesn't exist on, on, on Windows but this could work on, on, on Raspberry from what I think to know uh, but at the same time, uh, Tom Manier and Jonathan Richer, uh, as well as I don't remember Bruno maybe uh, or Etienne, I, I, I really don't remember. But uh, on th there is some discussion on the Discord for that. And yes, the goal is to have uh, the goal is to have inside chatting native a GPIO module. Uh, I just don't want to be the one to do it because I hope the community will take over and uh, obviously it needs that uh, some time for them to, to do that. So, uh, okay, if you want to do that, we have already resources. We kind of know how to do it. Uh, it's just a matter of testing it uh, and finding the right way to do it in, uh, in, in it, uh, in, um, in, in um, sorry, in chatting, but uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 be my guest on doing it. And if you want, uh, um, I can, like, you can ask questions on how to compile Chatagne and how to do all, the, all of those things. So 
you can get on uh, on it for the Raspberry Pi and no problem. Uh, at some point, uh, b basically for most of the modules, I only do them when I need them or when other people really need them. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. So GPIO, I don't really have a Raspberry Pi for with me uh, all the time. So I'm just not doing it. But if I need it, I would just do it. <laughs> Um, and if anybody wants to do it, they can. Uh, cre creating a module natively, if you are programming in C++, it's not that, that hard, I will tell you. Mm. And I'm more than willing to help and to guide through those things. Okay. Almost done. Well, um, I guess this is the end of this online workshop. Then my banana is finished, my work is done, my duty is completed. Uh, thank you again. It was really, really nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you soon.